ABC Sports presents High School Football. Today's game is brought to you by Don't Ford, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance, WB Green, West 40 Auto Sales, Southeastern Med, Abel's, Valentine Insurance, AMG Vanadium, Farmers Merchant Bank, Sue Snowed, and Dudley Satellites. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to high school football here on WWKC 104.9 on your FM dial here at the fairgrounds in Noble County. This is the one you've been waiting for uh, as the media and uh, all the hype that uh, has been around this game, I guess, since the first game of the season. Uh, everybody's been looking forward to uh, to this one, and so far the records players haven't disappointed. I tell you what, John. There's a lot of there's a big buzz here going on tonight at the fairgrounds. One I haven't heard here for a long time. And as you said, this is one of those games that uh, I, I know the Redskins in particular have had circled on their calendar since day one. Uh, and, and everybody's saying, you know, yeah, I, I, we know that they're seven and zero. We know they're averaging about 53, 54 points a game, and they've only given up 22. But you've not played anybody. Well. That they played the teams that were on their schedule, yeah. and they did what good teams are supposed to do, and that's take care of business. But they will get tested tonight, and when we're done with this one, we'll know a lot more about this Redskin football team. That goes without saying, and and you know that's that's a good point. Is the fact that uh, yeah, they're seven and zero, uh, and you know their teams that they played, you know, haven't exactly been power uh, football teams. But like you say, they've taken care of business. They haven't uh, struggled. They, they have gone out. They've done what they had to do. And, uh, you know, a lot of extra kids have got some playing time exactly. out there. And, uh, uh, you know, if you're Fort Fry, how do you look at that? Uh, it, it's hard to tell. And I, I know until the Redskins step up and smack them in the mouth here a couple times a night, I, they probably don't have a whole lot of respect coming in here for Colville because I think that's the big – buzz down in, in Beverly is, hey, I know you're 7-0. and You know, we've played this schedule. Well, you know, you look at their schedule, and, and they've played some good football teams, but good football teams that aren't having very good years. Yes. I mean, the, yes. the best team they played, uh, and, and they got beat by Lindsley, and, and granted, it was a three-point game, and, and Lindsley proved last week how good they were, John. Yes. They went to Steubenville and beat a Reno Sutcoch coach team at Steubenville, it doesn't happen very often. Yeah, that's unheard of. So that's telling you the quality of football team that Lindsley was. And from what I've heard, Fort Fry had every opportunity that night to win the football game. Absolutely. It was, so, it was a field goal at the right at the end it that, was. that beat them. So, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, I you have to believe that the buzz down there is, uh, hey, they haven't played anybody. We can go up there and bust them a couple times, and, uh, and uh, we'll have them in their hip pocket. So, uh, but... Uh, you know, you got to have some respect for Coach Huck, too. He's oh, my goodness, yes. Time, and he knows what he's doing, and I'm sure he's downplayed that uh, uh, to the best of his ability. So, uh, you know, uh, but for us, it's exciting. You know, we as the media, we uh, bill this as a big game. I tell you what. <laughs> People in Eastern District, I don't know that there has been a bigger football game than this. If you're just looking at the paper, you're looking at stats, you're looking at what's taking place. I mean, you've got Fort Fry who comes in here tonight, sixth in Division Six, uh, first in Region 23 in the computer rankings, and Colwell comes in number nine in the state, Division Seven, and they right now are ranked second in Division or in Region 27. I mean, you've got – I don't know how you can ask for a better matchup. Now, will, will it play out and be the game everybody thinks it's going to be? Don't we're know. about to find out. Yeah, we're about we to will find, find out tonight. Yes. So, with that being said, we've got a lot of other things we can discuss here, but we'll take a break and throw it back to Cooper here and uh, let him pay some bills. To rural Ohio. They offer a product to meet your insurance need, whether it is for a farm, rental dwelling, home in town, secondary or seasonal dwelling, churches, or mobile home. They partner with Grinnell Mutual Insurance Company to offer liability coverage to package with their patrons Buckeye Mutual Policy. Call today at 638-3604 and follow them on Facebook at Patrons Buckeye. By now. 
You know that sound. It's the sound of the Home Depot. But what about those sounds? Those are the sounds of Kraft Ice from a new LG refrigerator, cooling your drink to perfection. Making this the sound of savings on top brand appliances. Save up to $1,212 on this exclusive LG kitchen package with Kraft Ice at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Offer valid September 29th through October 19th. U.S. only. See store or online for details. When you can't stop, <coughs> there's Vicks VapoRub. Vicks VapoRub sends powerful medicated Vicks vapors right to the source of your... <coughs> so you can experience cough relief and breathe easier. <sighs> Generations of families have trusted Vicks VapoRub to help relieve the worst cold symptoms. So next time you have a cough, reach for the Vicks VapoRub. Vicks VapoRub. Cough relieving is believing. And welcome back here to the Noble County Fairground where Mike Plasiak and John Seacrest will bring you uh, tonight's action here on WWKC. And i tell you what, uh, I'm excited. I don't know about you, but... Uh, I've been looking forward, John, to this all week long. i tell you what, I've never spent so much time getting myself ready for a football game than what I did for this one tonight. Yeah, I've actually, I actually did, uh, did some homework, too, uh, uh, on, on this one. I actually talked to some of the coaches. And, uh, of course, uh, with Tad, I always get a lot of, you know, get a lot of high-octane information from him. Uh, well, he, he, gets it, he gets it uh, right, <laughs> right from uh, his dad, uh, true to form. So, uh, I, you know, it, it's just uh, fun. Folks, uh, and that's what that's what high school yeah. sports is supposed to be about, yeah. John. This this is this is great. I mean, you got a big fan base here. Uh, the the grandstands are going to be packed tonight. There's going to be a lot of people on the other side. I mean, this is what makes high school sports fun, and it's what it's all about. A absolutely, and uh, you know, uh, not not to be a, a downer, but I was reading uh, uh, today on uh, somewhere on Facebook or the internet or something where. Uh, another uh, high school football team canceled their season uh, in, in Ohio uh, simply because of uh, head injuries. Yeah, that they went ahead and uh, just said, no, uh, you know, we're quitting. So, boy, I, I tell you, that's uh, something that you don't like to think about uh, when you come into something like this because you know tonight uh, there is going to be you know, if you were back in the old days, there's going to be some leather flying. <laughs> You're right. You, you know, and, and that's I think that's what everybody's hoping for. They, they, just, they want to see a good contest. They want to see both teams play to the best of their ability. And, and, and may the best team win. And both teams come out of here injury-free. Absolutely. Because I think they've got a lot of football ahead of them because definitely both teams are going to make the playoffs here. And I think we're getting ready here yeah. for the National okay. Anthem. Okay, uh, Cooper, we're getting ready for the National Anthem, so we're going to throw her right back to your capable hands. By now, you know that sound. It's the sound of the Home Depot. But what about those sounds? Those are the sounds of Kraft Ice from a new LG refrigerator, cooling your drink to perfection making this the sound of savings on top brand appliances. Save up to $1,212 on this exclusive LG kitchen package with Kraft Ice at The Home Depot. How doers get more done. Offer valid September 29th through October 19th, U.S. only. See store or online for details. When you can't stop, <coughs> there's Vicks VapoRub. Vicks VapoRub sends powerful medicated Vicks vapors right to the source of your... <coughs> so you can experience cough relief and breathe easier. <sighs> Generations of families have trusted Vicks VapoRub to help relieve the worst cold symptoms. So next time you have a cough, reach for the Vicks VapoRub. Vicks VapoRub. Cough relieving is believing. Whether you are experiencing pain in your knee, tingling in your fingers, or a sore back, Superior Med Orthopedics is here for you. Their patients' health and safety is their top priority, and they currently offer telehealth visits for your initial appointment. Take comfort in knowing when you come to their facility, they're following all protocols to ensure you remain safe. Find out all their team offers by visiting seormc.org today to learn more. 
Just like on the field, we believe in teamwork with our customers. This is Ashley Rich from the Farmers and Merchants Bank on the Square in Colwell. With our services, you can bank from your home, the office, or even at the stadium. You can sit back and enjoy the game knowing your money is in great hands. Good luck to all the local teams this year from everyone at the Farmers and Merchants Bank. Member FDIC. Everyone's looking for an encouraging sign in today's economy. The fact is, you'll find one right here in Caldwell at State Farm Agent Sue Snow's office. Because State Farm agents like Sue have been here helping people protect the things that matter most. That's why more people trust State Farm, and we consider that a very good sign. See State Farm Agent Sue Snow at 400 East Street, Caldwell. This is Russ Abel's. This time of the year, there are two big reasons homeowners call us here at Abel's. The first is for annual maintenance. Our technicians know how to keep heating systems running perfectly. Our detailed tune-up and safety check will help you avoid a breakdown and improve your system's energy efficiency. The other reason is it is time to replace your heating. And if that's you, right now we can help you save with a new high efficiency system. So wherever you're at, we're ready to help. For heating and air conditioning, call Abel's. And back at the Noble County Fairgrounds, where we're just about ready uh, as the Indian comes across. Uh-oh, she lost her headgear <laughs> down on the track. I don't know what that means, but uh, I don't know what kind of an omen that is to uh, any followers of the American Indians. But we're getting about four minutes left before this one kicks off, so Mike's going to, we're going to give you some starting lineups here tonight, and uh that way you can tell who's going to do what for who. We'll start here with the uh, Caldwell Redskins, their, uh, their alignment. And, of course, this is offensively. The starting center is Easton Depew, a 5'10", 230-pound junior. The two guards are Ethan Carpenter, a 5'8", 210-pound senior, along with Colby Langley, a 5'11", 195-pound senior. The tackles tonight for the Redskins, number 60, Jace Norman. 6'2", 275-pound junior, along with senior Seth Archer coming in at 6'2", 265. The skill position players for the Redskins, and they are very blessed this year yeah, with boy, a lot of skill they? kids that can do a lot of things, John. Oh, a lot they're, of weapons. They're led uh, by running back Marshall Sayer, a third-team All-Ohioan last year as a junior, 5'10", 195 pounds. He comes in so far with... Uh, 820 yards and 14 touchdowns in the first seven games. Uh, the other running back, Tice Duvall, to transfer from Shenandoah, six foot one, 205 pounds, comes in averaging almost 14 yards a carry for the Redskins. At the uh, wing back position, uh, a very good athlete, Braxton Dudley, 5'10", 165 pound senior, and John, he can do it all. He, he can run, he can catch, and he can throw because he was the quarterback he was, here yes. his freshman and sophomore years. Well, there's no question the Redskins are loaded with uh, – our, they have a whole arsenal of weapons in the backfield. They do, and I tell yes. you what, they, they've got one that comes in uh, on and off, Dylan Wheeler, yes. a 5'10", 170-pound junior, uh, along with – I did uh, forget the tight end. The tight end is number two, Ethan Crock, who's having a great year. 6'2", 185-pound sophomore, and the uh, wide receiver is Alex Herlin, a very athletic 6'3", 175-pound sophomore. So that's your Redskins here tonight offensively. Okay, let's take a look here uh, at the Fort Fry Cadets starting lineup. Their center will be number 66, a 6'4", 250-pound senior, Caleb Riggs, at one tackle. Number 56, Graham Baker, 5'10", 215. He's a junior. At uh, one guard, Stone Dixon. He's 5'9", 170, and a senior. At the other tackle, it's 63, Carter Brooker, 6'1", 230. He's a senior. Tight end is Zayden Huck, 5'11", 190-pound senior. The quarterback will be Clayton Miller. Six foot, 180 pound sophomore. The running back, and he's a good one. Owen Brown, 6'2", 205, a senior. One wide out, or sometimes the slot back. Austin Powell, 5'8", 160 pounds, senior. 
And the other wide out is Ethan Dusky, a 5'8", 180-pound senior. So, Mike, you can see that the cadets are laced with seniors. And, and both teams really are, John. You know, uh, and, and if you're going to have good seasons, uh, you're, you're probably going to have a lot of seniors. And, and I to. think this is the season that both of these teams have kind of shot for. I know I've talked to a lot of people. I've, I've got a niece that's a, a middle school principal for it, Fry, and I know this is the year they really think they can do some damage in the playoffs. They got beat last year in the regional finals by West Jeff, 16-14, and they were very disappointed that they weren't in the final four. Well, most of those kids are back this year, and they're shooting for bigger and better things. Well, and the Redskins also, on by the same token, uh, you know, the same thoughts are passing through the minds here in the stands tonight. Exactly. That they're looking for a run uh, into the playoffs this year as they got beat last year in the second round by Newark Catholic. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Newark Catholic is out there looming somewhere. If if that's – if if Caldwell is going to – the uh, region runs through Newark Catholic. Absolutely. If, if you are Absolutely. in Division 7, yep. you know that you have to play the green wave yep. to get to the Final Four. Absolutely. And uh, I, I think they learned a valuable lesson by playing them last year, and I think we're going to get a true indication tonight of where they stand as far as how, how competitive they could be well, every, against Newark Catholic down the road. Everything points in that – in that direction, you know, I I totally agree with you that that's, uh, you know, uh, something has to give here tonight. It does. Uh, and, uh, you know, there'll be uh, a lot of people around, uh, you know, in the uh, southeastern and eastern district looking for the outcome of this score. For sure. And, because, uh, uh, you know, so both teams are sure to get in the playoffs. We're not even... You well, know, nowadays when they there. take 16 teams yeah. anymore, John, you only yeah. have to win about three games yeah. to make the playoffs. Yeah. So they, they, these teams have been a short of the playoff a long time ago, but they're, they're one to host as long as they can, ab both ab teams. Absolutely. So uh, the cadets will take off. We didn't see who won the toss or whether they deferred or not, but uh, number seven has stepped up uh, to uh, – do the kicking, and we've got Dudley and uh, as Zayden Huck will kick it off. Oh, oh they tried the onside kick that did not go. Oh. oh, there's oh, the first my. break of the game on the opening kickoff. Wow. Goes for the Redskins. Wow. So they're going to take over right away. The first possession is going to be at and about the uh, Fort Fry 44-yard line. Boy. Uh, wow. Wow. I, I saw a couple of good hands people for the Redskins up uh, up in uh, the front line of that. But, uh, boy, I'll tell you, Mike, that uh, we might want to write that down. It's not a shame. I mean, it's not surprising that they tried the onside kick. The fact that it was so poorly executed, poorly executed. is what uh, really surprises yeah, me. So they're going to – Spotted at the 39. 39-yard line. Yeah, so first. great opportunity here for the Redskins right out of the gate. So here we go. As Caleb Bender in shotgun. Sarah right beside him on his left hip. And there it goes. It's back to... Uh -oh. That was... Uh, that was Dylan yeah, Wheeler, Dylan the ball Wheeler, carrier. And, uh, they tried Boy, to they... Run, and they got a flag flag on the play too as he was he I was think dropped they're... by uh, number 54 uh, for the for the cadets and they got a holding penalty too 54 is uh, boy got him get him here in a minute uh, Matthias Kesselring brought him down and that's a holding penalty on the Redskins so That'll go from the spot of the foul. And they are going to accept that penalty. I thought maybe they would ah, refuse yeah. it with such a yeah. large loss to begin with. But, boy, this is going to put uh, the Redskins in a precarious situation. It's going to be first in about uh, half of Noble County. Yep. So, yeah, it goes back to the 39-yard line. So the Redskins will have it now first in about uh, probably about 20, close to 25 is – Ready for the snap. There it is, a good snap. Quick pass over the middle. Caught by nice. Wheeler. That's Boy, nice yeah, throw and nice catch that throw, time. Yeah. Put it right on the money. Wheeler. Little seam route run that time by Wheeler. Wheeler wide open on the catch from, you know, from Kale Bender. And Kale Bender put it right there. And again, 
Redskins going tempo. Bender takes the snap, flips it out uh, into the little little bubble screen. And he, he's, he's going, John. Through. He's in the end and zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Redskins. Boy, what, that's Wheel. a play that I, I've seen Caldwell play about four times. That's something they've been saving, I think, for this game. Bender rolled a little bit to his left. Wheeler kind of snuck out in the flats. Yeah, the defensive end over there was caught between the two. He decided to attack the quarterback. And, boy, once he dumped it out there in, in, the, in the flats, yeah. Wheeler was off to the races. Wheeler's off to the races. Yep, so the Redskins go up immediately, 6 nothing. Uh, not even a minute off of the clock yet. And, and the kick extra point is good, so the Redskins lead this one seven to nothing. So we'll take a break here right now and wait for the next kickoff. And Cooper, you can uh, pay some more bills. Whether you are experiencing pain in your knee, tingling in your fingers, or a sore back, Superior Med Orthopedics is here for you. Their patient's health and safety is their top priority, and they currently offer telehealth visits for your initial appointment. Take comfort in knowing when you come to their facility, they're following all protocols to ensure you remain safe. Find out all their team offers by visiting seormc.org today to learn more. And back at the Noble County Fairgrounds, lightning struck quickly here in the, from uh, Kale Bender to Dylan Wheeler on a 41-yard touchdown uh, reception. And it was just a, a – it wasn't a bubble screen. No. Or nothing. He just rolled to his left, and Wheeler got out in front of him a little bit and made put some pressure on the uh, defense, and the defense made the wrong decision. I, I tell you what, that – we're, we're 47 seconds into this yes. football game. We've already had all kind of excitement. We've had a, a botched onside kick. We've had uh, a 15-yard loss on the first play from scrimmage and then tack on a holding call on top of that. Yeah. And they overcame like first and 35. Oh, Tice Duvall on the kickoff. And, boy, that looked like almost an onside kick, too, as it – it, it, was it, may be, it may have been decided they didn't really want to kick the ball deep back there to wow. Owen Brown, okay. and that's probably a good decision. Yeah, so the cadets will get first. Uh, be, they'll get good field position on about their own 42-yard line here, so they will put it in play for the first time. As, and, John, we're going to watch the wing T run to perfection yeah. tonight with Fort Fry because yeah, that's Clayton their staple. Miller, Clayton Miller put – and that's a handoff to give the little misdirection. And that was Owen that Brown, goes I believe. To Owen Brown, and he picks up about, well, they didn't give him a yard. No. So Ethan Croc come in on the, on the stop for that. Ethan Croc at defensive end. And, uh, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't make very many mistakes. No, out he there. doesn't. Just a sophomore. Yep. And again, mis misdirection, and boy, they're pushing the pushing the pile to the right side. And that was number uh, twenty, I believe, and Brendan Riddle. Okay. 160 pound junior on that sweep, little jet sweep that time. And that was enough for a first down. Caldwell Lumber first down. Now that boy get that Caldwell That's Lumber right. There. Let's take care of it. Got to take care of that. And again, Clayton Miller is under center. He's got Brown, Dusky. That's Riddle in motion. Riddle in motion again, and that's that misdirection. And he's going to get down to about the 35-yard line. 34, now they're going to mark it at the 37, Mike. Back to back, same play. You know, it looks like Coach Chuck may have a philosophy. You didn't stop the first time, I'm going to run it yeah. until you do stop. I'm sure he's got something scripted that he's uh, following the script on. As again, Clayton Miller goes, goes under center. And there, that's Owen Brown off right tackle, and he's going to get uh, – He's going to get enough for the first down, and he's brought, brought down by Dylan Wheeler at his linebacker spot. 
So that's another first and 10 for the cadets as they uh, have moved in to Redskin territory. They're down to about the 34, 33 yard line of the Redskins. And again, now uh, he's in the, oh, uh, and that, uh, yep, that was a bad snap that came back to Miller, a high snap, and he couldn't handle it, and it was a high handoff to, uh, you know, to Owen Brown, and uh, by that time, the Redskins had good penetration. Boy, I tell you, that penetration was at that time by Ethan Carpenter. That, that loss of about, uh, that's about a six-yard loss. That probably that fortunate for Fort Fry that that ball wasn't fumbled because was, Carpenter yeah. got, got there about the same time that the ball got to, that uh, ball to Brown. Right, right up on the face mask of Owen Brown. And again, and he gets away. That's uh, the quarterback, and he slips away and gets up to about the 35-yard line. Just pick up of so about two. Two on that one, yeah. So that was a pass play, but uh, the pocket collapsed on him, and uh, Redskins again had good pressure on Clayton Miller. So this brings up a big third down in about 12. But you know what, John, where they're down, at? It's four, four down, down territory. territory. Yes, they've, yeah. got, they've got two downs yeah. to make about 13 yards. Brown stays to the right as Miller goes under center. 7.52, first quarter. And he drops back to pass Miller. Down the middle. Oh, man, wide open. Drop oh, it. Oh, drop the drop ball. Dropped it. Intended. That hit Zayden Huck that, right, right in the hands. Right in the hands. That will bring up fourth down and uh, the coverage back that time by by number seven that was uh that's uh, alex herlin alex herlin and alex was beaten he was yeah he good was route that time i tell you what he was wide open all he needed if he catches the ball he, no, he's, he's he, he walks six. in he's got six he walks yeah. in 745 left to go here in this first quarter redskins up seven to nothing as they took a botched onside kick on the first kickoff and took it right down and scored. So the cadets uh, have fourth down and about 12. As Miller in the shotgun, Owen Brown goes in motion and he's gonna be sacked. Yeah, yeah, as, so that's gonna turn the ball over on downs to, to the Redskins. As, as that time, uh, the Redskins got got in there. Pretty good Frank coverage that Tice. time by the secondary of Caldwell. Uh, yeah, and finally, Tice Duvall got in there and took care of Clayton Miller as he... So the Redskins have it first and 10 on their own 40-yard line with a chance to get on the board again. So... Uh, no, and boy, Sayer just got just tripped got, up, or I'll tell you what, he had a lot of green space yep, out in front of him. Yep, he, Good pick up there on first down. Yep, as Carter, Carter Brooker made that shoestring tackle. So he picked up about eight, so it's second and about two. And again, Kale is in the shotgun. Wheeler in motion. Rolling out is Bender. Bender to his right, looking. Nobody to throw it to, and he's gonna he's gonna get the corner and pick up the first down as he's run out of bounds out there by the cadets. But it is enough for another Caldwell Lumber first down into Fort Fry territory at about the 48-yard line. So good job by Kale Bender. So Bender goes back in the shotgun, waiting to snap. Three wide outs. And here comes a quick, quick handoff to Sayre. Sayre, and Sayre gets running room off the right side as he got a good, good block out there from Braxton Dudley. And he picked up about, uh, about seven, eight yards on that play. So right now, boy, Mike, the Redskins uh, asserting themselves. They uh, they have the momentum on their side without yep. a doubt. That's two big first down gains there back to back by Marshall Sayer. Yeah, Sayer now shifts to the right of quarterback Kale Bender. Oh, we didn't. And Bender overthrows Tice Duvall, the intended receiver. So Redskins again showing 
uh, just keep you honest. Throw it deep. Keep. I tell you, pretty good Braxton, coverage back there Braxton, by Braxton, Bra Braxton Brown, along with Clayton defense. Miller. Yeah, pretty yeah. good. They had him doubled up. Yep. It had taken an absolutely perfect throw to get that ball to uh, Devolt. But I like to play call. Oh yeah, on yeah. Second and short. Because you're third. you're in four down territory. Yep. You've got the two now, downs to get three yards. Braxton Dudley comes into the backfield. Low snap. Braxton gets it, and Braxton is not going to get get the first down. He's Not only that, I think they're going to call a hold against yeah, the Redskins. Yeah, I think there's another hold coming up here. Yes, Dudley tried to get outside, but uh, number two, Owen, Owen Brown, got in there and not sure who. Uh, if, evidently, they didn't hold Owen Brown. <laughs> so, let's see. See what the uh, yeah, because they're, they're, if they don't take it, it's, all, it's going to be fourth and about. Fourth and about two. And I don't. You know, They're I trying to decide. Coach Chuck's trying to decide whether or not he wants to take this penalty or not. Yeah, he's going to take, take it. They're yeah. going to take it. Yeah, I right now I don't think he uh, might not have that old uh, trust in his defense right now to stop him for two yards. Well, I tell you what, uh, Caldwell's shown so far that they have the ability. To, seems like to run up in between the tackles. Now the couple times they've tried to go outside. Not had much success doing that, but between the tackles, they've had some success so far. Well, you know, Marshall Sayer, uh, he's going to get some yardage. There's no doubt about that. So maybe the, their defensive sc uh, scheme might be to stop the outside. Evidently. Yep, so now it's second down and about uh, 15. Wheeler's going to go in the slot there on the left-hand yeah, side. A, that's what we liked before. As, uh, under center now is Cale Bender. And he gives it to Marshall Sayer. Marshall Sayer gets, like you said, gets good yardage right up the middle as he gets up, he gets into Fort Fry territory at about the 42-yard line. That's about a 13-yard yeah. pickup. That's going to, it's going to be interesting right here to see what the uh, Redskins decide to okay. do. They're about fourth and five from the Fort and Fry 43, and looks like they're going to line up to go, go for, it. for it. Well, I, well, I like it. I like Here, here's the situation where Cale Bender is the punter and is also the quarterback. Yeah. So he, when he lines up back there, he's got the option if they want to run a fake out of it. Now the uh, person that went deep for the uh, cadets. Cadets has now come back up. To, he has. Uh, and now we got a timeout called by the Redskins. So Mike will take a timeout with him here and send it back over here to Cooper and let him do his thing. <laughs> Now located at 16050 McConnellsville Road in Caldwell, Ohio, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance Company is a mutual insurance company established in 1896 for the purpose of providing insurance coverage to rural Ohio. They offer a product to meet your insurance need, whether it is for a farm, rental dwelling, home in town, secondary or seasonal dwelling, churches, or mobile home. They partner with Grinnell Mutual Insurance Company to offer liability coverage to package with their Patrons Buckeye Mutual Policy. Call today at 638 3604 and follow them on Facebook at Patrons Buckeye. And back at Caldwell High School, the Redskins lead this one seven to nothing on a quick touchdown to begin the football game after a missed onside kick. And now they're faced with fourth down. And this is why the head and, coaches make all that big money, John, and, because and, this is a big, this, it's early on. We're five minutes, you know, to go in the first quarter. But this is kind of a crucial play right here. Uh, if the Redskins don't pick it up, it's going to give the uh, yep. cadets very good field position. Bender in the shotgun, waiting to snap, going for a long count. Gets the snap, drops back, looks downfield. He throws it downfield, and it's underthrown. Boy, I tell you yeah. what, I think Bender had all kind of room out there on the I left flat. He, he could have run very easily for there a first was, down. There was a lot of green there, and that, that was uh, in, intended for uh, the Hurlin, I believe, yeah. Hurlin, and uh, it was defended by uh, Austin Powell for the cadets. So a big defensive stand there for the uh, cadets, and they'll take over from their own 43-yard line with 5.01 to go here in the first quarter. So Clayton Miller goes into the shotgun. He's got Brown back there, Dusky. And there's Ethan Brown, and he's got running room, and he's, uh, and he's missed and fumbles, and we got a flag. 
That might have been a horse that collar. Could have been. He had it. Well, somebody had him by the collar, and the uh, umpire threw that flag, and he's. Uh, oh no, that was just the marker for the fumble. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the uh, ball is on the Redskins, forty four yard line. The other reason I thought that, John, Clayton Miller came up and made a motion towards the yeah. official saying that, hey, that was a horse collar. Where's the flag at? Yeah. Yep. And we could see that uh, shoulder pad go out there. But it did, but no, no, uh, no, call. no flag, no <laughs> foul. Yep. First and ten for the cadets. Oh, a little inside really handoff. Inside off. Hand up and that, and that goes to Riddle again. And he's going to pick up about yeah, that's it. Boy, Fort Fry likes misdirection, Mike. They do. They like it. Well, that's the main and staple of that, of that wing, wing, wing T offense. Tee. I tell you what, yeah. it's just a little cross buck action. They faked like an off tackle, inside handle. That's a tough play to defend. Ward Holdsworth. Yeah. Newcomerstown ran the wing T to death. And, and that's one reason why Coach X had so much success with this program. They do the same thing all the way down. Every program that they have down there right. runs the same offense. With the same terminology. There's another another one. This goes to Owen Brown, and he's going to pick up uh, the first down. So it'll be a Caldwell Lumber first down as they move it up to about the 33 yard, 32 yard line. 32 yard line. Yeah. So Owen Brown running hard, Mike. 3.32 to go in the first quarter. 7-0 in favor of the Caldwell Redskins here at the fairground in the big one that you've all been waiting for. Hope you're all tuned in and comfortable in your easy chair. And, what a beautiful uh, night for football, huh? I mean, perfect. This, can't perfect. ask for a better night than yep. this. And this, this, this time, Miller in the shotgun, fakes it, cuts it up inside, and runs down to about the 28 or 29. Uh, on that play. You knew he was going to call his number here pretty shortly. I don't, uh, he's just a sophomore, Mike, so. Uh, Very good athlete, yeah. though. Good basketball player. Yeah. Uh, boy, I tell you, he stepped right in and had a real good year as a starting quarterback as a sophomore. So, Tackle made that time by Ethan Crock, sophomore against sophomore. Yeah, under center, and there goes Riddle off the right side. And, He's going to be knocked down, uh, may pick up a yard or two, going to bring up third down as he advances it, uh, to about the 27-yard line of the Redskins where it'll be third down and about five. That's probably the best that the Redskins have defensed that off-tackle play because Riddle's yeah. had a lot of success going picking up yardage. He, he's got four carries for 34 yards already this evening. Look for him to come back to the left side here shortly, I would think. So Miller goes under court, uh, under center, man in motion. Oh, uh, and boy, Tice the ball put a hit. Smelled on, that out, hit, yeah. Hit it on the on the ball carrier, and again, that's uh, that's uh, Austin, that's Austin Powell uh, who ran that one, and uh, he he just barely got back to the line of scrimmage. So that's going to bring up fourth down and about four. Another big play here for the yeah, cadets. Yeah, for the cadets, absolutely. Yep. So the Redskins defense looking around, making sure they're all in the right places and, and, and dug in because, you know, they need a stop right here. So, again, Miller will stay in the shotgun. Man in motion. Reverses, comes the other way. Long count. Now motion, high snap, got a flag. I bet you somebody moved. Oh, yep. they call it. Yep, I think they're going to call it uh, illegal illegal motion on Fort Fry. Oh, they, oh, they did called get the a call timeout. timeout. They, got a time yeah. they did get a call of timeout. So they signal that. So, Cooper, you can pay some more bills here then. I was sitting in my car, and it wouldn't start. I lifted the hood, and the engine was falling apart. What would I do? My eyes filled with tears. And on the radio, I heard of West 40 by pay here, where for a little money down and a little each week, 
I can have a car, nice, shiny, and sleek. So I walked in the door, and I put the money down. Now I got a nice car that I can drive around. Was 40 by pay here, will help rebuild your credit. The corner of Dewey and Route 40 in Cambridge, don't you forget it. West 40 Auto Sales, corner of Route 40 and Dewey Avenue in Cambridge, is home of the guaranteed credit approval, with most loans approved while you wait. Go to their website to fill out an online loan application, west40autosales.com. You'll also find their weekly special listed there. And back at Noble County Fairgrounds, big play coming up here for the Fort Fry Cadets. And they fumble it. Fumble it. He gets away. The quarterback gets away, but he's not going to get the first down. He's going to be run out of bounds at about the... Uh, yeah, he's going to be run out of bounds at about the 19 or about the 23 yard line. And again, uh, mistakes, Mike, as uh, a bad snap cost him that play. That's so, the third fumble that they've had. So now they haven't lost any of them, yeah. but it just screws up the timing because yeah. everything in that wing T offense is timing. Is timing. It's right. all about timing and deception. And boy, when you fumbled it. I don't yeah. know if the snap was high, but he's he's had trouble with a couple of those snaps so far this evening. And, boy, big stop that time by the Redskins. Yes, big defensive fight. 50 seconds left in this one. 7 nothing in favor of the Redskins as they take over on downs on their own 26-yard line. Cale Bender drops straight back to pass. He's under pressure. Oh, and he gets clobbered as he tried to get down and run it. And he's just going to be stopped at about the line of scrimmage as I believe that was number 56 Graham Baker Graham Baker boy he put a lick on junior. him yeah he hit him pretty hard so second and ten and now Bender goes under center with Duvall in the backfield and they give it give it to Sayre and he's and he that was all Marshall oh, Sayre that time, there. John. Yeah, a cadet had him in the backfield, and he ran. He had him up high around the waist, and Marshall Sayre ran right through that and picked up the first down. So that's going to be the end of the first quarter here at Caldwell High School. Mike Plasiak, John Seekers with you here tonight as the first quarter comes to an end. Seven to nothing in favor of the Redskins. We'll be back for second quarter action right after this. In today's marketplace, you have many choices for insurance. WB Green Insurance, a representative of Westfield Insurance, is committed to providing you with excellent coverage for your home and auto at a fair and competitive price. Westfield has been in the neighborhood for over 150 years, providing peace of mind and quality insurance products through independent insurance professionals. Sharing knowledge, building trust is Westfield's pledge to their customers. Call WB Green Insurance today. I'm not buying till I check down most of us are faced with uncertainty every day. Your job, your finances, sporting events, schooling for your children, and so much more. With so much uncertainty surrounding you, there's one auto dealership that you can be certain about, and that's Doan Ford. You can be certain that you'll always get a great deal and the best service afterwards. In business for nearly 60 years has given Doan Ford the reputation of being a strong, reliable dealership. Be certain. Choose Doan Ford online at DoanFord.com. And back at Caldwell High School at the fairgrounds in Noble County, 7-0 in favor of the Redskins. So we start second quarter action. Redskins have it at their own 37-yard line. Hand off up the middle to Sarah, and this time Sarah is whacked right at the line, line of scrimmage by number 66, Caleb Riggs, the 6'4", 215-pound nose guard for the cadets and the Redskins going tempo, Mike. Uh, they might have gone to the well one too many times on that play. I've seen yeah. Bender under center more tonight, tonight so far yes. than I've seen him all year. Yeah, and again, they give it outside to Tice Duvall, and he's not, well, he did get away from a tackle, probably picked up about two yards before he's knocked out of bounds again by uh, Caleb Riggs, who came over from his nose guard. Well, they're not going to mark it right at the line of scrimmage, I guess, Mike. So it'll be third down and about uh, 
eight. Boy, they eight. had they had the vault hemmed in here over on the uh, left sideline, and he had nowhere to go. Good pursuit that time by the front was, of he, Fort Fry. Yeah, he was lucky to get much forward progress at all. So uh, now th this time, Bender goes back into the shotgun, and right on his right hip is Marshall Sayer. And now we got a timeout. Redskins are going to call timeout. Yeah. Well, let's we'll just keep it right here since this is the beginning of the beginning of the quarter and uh, the uh, first quarter uh, outside of that first uh, first series uh, kind of settled into a you know we'll feel you out and, and uh, you feel us out and we'll we'll see what happens so we've seen a lot of offense but it seems like every time one of the teams seems to get a little momentum going offensively there's a penalty or you know a, a botched snap uh, we've we've seen Fort Fry mishandle three long snaps so far, and uh, Call has put the ball on the ground once. Neither one, not, none of those were turnovers, but it kind of slows the momentum down yeah, a little bit know, when that and, happens. You know, like you alluded to there, uh, it, it messes up your timing. It does. Yeah, and uh, it just screws up everything. And, and uh, I'm sure Coach Huck is not happy with it. Oh, no, he can't be a happy camper no. right now with what he's no, seen so far here in the first yeah. quarter. Because his, his, you know, he hangs his hat on not making mistakes. And, and most good coaches do, John. Yeah. If you're going to be successful, you are not going to beat yourself. So the Redskins have it. Play back, ready to start. Here comes Cale Bender. He's going to roll. He's got, he's got running room. He's got a lot of running room. Yep, and he picks, takes it up to the Fort Fry, Fort Fry, 45-yard line, first and ten. Redskins. Another so Colwell Lumber first, first down. down. Third Absolutely. of the night for the Redskins. Absolutely. Yep. So what a nice, nice read that time by Bender because he went back to throw the ball, and that was not a, 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 a called run. But, no, boy, he saw the gates open up in the middle and, and took off, and that young man's got some speed. He does. He does deceptively. Bender now back in the shotgun, waiting to snap, takes it, fakes it, goes up the middle again. He's going to pick up about uh, he's going to pick up about two or three yards. Stopped by number 53, Caleb uh, Bailey, I think. Caleb Bailey? I think, yeah. Can't read my writing there. Oh, that's your writing. I, <laughs> <laughs> that's a math teacher's writing, folks. <laughs> Yeah, I was a mathematician, not a writer. <laughs> I mean, was my wife, my wife's the writer. <laughs> Second down and eight for the Redskins. Ball resting on the 47-yard line. Snap goes to Sayre. Sayre stutter steps and gets nowhere. Maybe a 66. loss of a couple there. Yep, 66 again. Caleb Riggs in the middle there. and Number seven has uh, lost his... Uh, Lost his helmet. Uh, that's Ali, or, uh, Zayden Huck, Zayden I believe. Huck. Yeah. So he'll have to go out. He's an inside linebacker. Yeah, he's he, going to come out for a play. Have to come out. That's the nephew of the head coach, Eric Huck. Okay. All right. Third down and ten for the Redskins. Ball back now on about the 44-yard line of the Cadets. There's the. And he ties the ball, jumps, makes a couple of men miss, gets back to about just about the line of scrimmage, and that'll bring up fourth down and ten for the Redskins. And let's see what they decide to do. The ball is on about the what 44-yard line of the Cadets, and I don't see the punter. Do you? Well, the punter is Kale Bender. That's so true. is he back That's as true. quarterback, or is he back there as a punter? We're about to find out. We're He's a little find, deeper. He's a little deeper than the. Uh, normal shotgun snap and, and fort fry has nobody deep here so no, they don't and they're coming there they come and they get, bender gets it away and it's bouncing nice took and punt. well bounce and it's going to go dead inside the five yard line at about the three nice punt that time that by the punt, junior so, bender so the, and that's one of those you know ideal things you know when you've got your quarterback this back there he is a punter he can make that decision, you know. He saw nobody was back deep, and he made a good decision that time with that punt. Yeah, that's, uh, again, that's the weapons that we have alluded to 
here in the beginning of the broadcast that the, that the Redskins might bring to the table. And, John, just go back that play right before that when they threw that little swing pass to DeVault. It looks like they might be setting up a double pass because DeVault was a quarterback he his was, freshman he, and sophomore years absolutely. in high school. So that may be coming later. And here comes uh, the cadets have it at their own three. And the hand, I think that was Owen Brown. to Owen Brown, and he's going to pick up about uh, – Oh, maybe a yard or two on that play as they're trying to run it out. They get it over the five to about the six. Eight twelve left to go here in the second quarter. Seven to nothing in favor of the Redskins here in this uh, highly touted match between the Cadets and the Redskins. Pretty oh. even contest here yeah. so far. There's a little, that, there's that sweep again. Boy, I tell you, yeah. the Redskins defended that well that time. The whole left-hand side of the defense yeah, that's was Kobe. in there. Yeah, that's. Uh, Led by Seth Archer. And uh, Colby Langley. Colby Langley. In there, yeah. Colby Langley will put a lick on you. Yep, and no gain on that one. So, the, the big play here for the cadets deep in their own territory. So let's see what Coach Huck dials up on this one as he as he puts Clayton Miller back. We got uh, we the got kids in the end zone that are throwing the, the football, kind of got too far out onto the field. Yep, uh, they uh, must have thrown an errant one. <laughs> <laughs> so you, Yep. They're officiating two games yeah, of the, uh, too, yeah. the touch football set. game. Now we're set as Miller is in the shotgun. Oh, it's caught. What, what a, a catch. catch. What a catch by number number 11. Braxton That's Brown. Braxton Brown out there. Oh, my. The, what an uh, That was an athletic catch. And that's a first, first down as it moves it out out to about the 18 yard line for the cadets so boy and that one was on a, on a rope from Clayton Miller so Miller still in the shotgun first and 10 rolls out again little dink little dink oh pass. my goodness what a yeah. good break on the football that time yeah, by the free safety Kale Bender he, he yeah, almost he had almost a pick had. six and if he did that was a pick six yeah so it's incomplete so that'll bring up second and 10 for the for the cadets. Boy, and tried to throw a little out route that time again to uh, back to Braxton Brown, who made the, the great catch on the previous play, and that was well read that time by Bender. You think uh, Coach Huck might be going to a little maybe a little double aerial, move? Yeah, right aerial, now a little aerial. pump and go. Uh, yeah, here again, that's probably something we're going to see here before the night's over because it's yeah. set up. Second and ten for the Redskins or for the cadets at their 18-yard line. Oh, and he's, that was. Initially hit there, I believe. Miller, and he's, that was Sayer to begin with, yeah. and I think cleaned up then by Duvall and uh, Ethan Crock. And he's going to lose, yeah, third down and 10 as he barely got back to the line of scrimmage. So right now, boy, uh, everything going the Redskins' way uh, defensively. Miller seems to be just a little more tentative now running the football because he's had a couple pretty good licks put on him by the uh, Caldwell defense. Well, that was one of the things that the Redskins hoped that they could do was they hoped that they could really, you know, get get some pretty good uh, defensive stops on them. <laughs> so a little trickery, a little, a little shovel pass com complete. Not for much, though, only no, for a couple yards. for a couple yards, so that'll bring up fourth and ten, and the ball is just about the, on the 21-yard line of the Fort Fry Cadets, so they're going to have to punt it. That looked like a Patrick Mahomes play yeah. for Kansas City Chiefs, yeah. a little underhanded yeah. inside move, and yep. the def very well defensed that time by, by Caldwell. Aiden, Aiden Holman back for the Cadets to do the punting. He'll kick from about his own nine-yard yeah. line. And gets a good one away. That's going to be fielded by Dudley. Hit Dudley, yeah. Up, and there's a block in the back. So that will be a block in the back as Dudley tried to cut it around from the right hash or left hash mark to the right hash mark and 
boom. The, ri- the initial stop was made by his own man. I think that was Alex Herlin that uh, Dudley ran into. But I think that uh, so that's that block in the back, I think, is going to go against Tice DeVold. So another 10-yarder ten assessed yeah. against the Redskins. That's their third penalty night for 30 yards. And again, if you want to beat a good football team, you can't make mistakes. Yeah, that uh, and uh, the ball came behind the runner. Yes. Yeah, they had no it, it had no no bearing as far as what. Uh, okay, first and ten for the Redskins, on about their own twenty-eight yard line. Bender rolling, throwing, and over overthrows Dudley in the in the right. He ran a little out pattern to the right sideline, and uh, a little bit too tall for him. He really didn't get his shoulder squared real well that time. Dudley was open out in the flats, defended over there. I believe that was uh, Braxton Brown on the coverage. Uh, he had a little room over there, just the ball thrown too high. That'll bring up second down and 10. Ball's on the 28-yard line of the Redskins after that 10-yard illegal block. Yeah, yeah. So... So we got Hurlin and Dudley out here wide to the left. Nobody, nobody out right. And now we got another flag. And uh, that's going to be uh, offsides, Ford Fry. Yeah, they're going to so, get five yards back to him. Yeah. That's been, I think, the first penalty assessed against the cadets tonight. And that had just had to be somebody lined up in the neutral it, it zone. It did, yeah, because the ball was never yeah, staffed. No. And I didn't see any movement out no. of it. It had to be... Uh, well, had to the, be somebody the lined defense up. Defense can move. You know, they just right. can't line up. Can't in, line up in, in the uh, what we used to call that encroachment. Encroachment. <laughs> That's too big a word. <laughs> can you spell that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but my pay grade. So now it's second down and very manageable. And the Redskins the got Redskins. To spread all over the field oh, here. Oh my! Four, or five wideouts, slots, and. Uh, <laughs> And oh. intended for Tice Duvall. And went right through Tice's hands, and that's one of those where the coaches say, Tice, oh, look the ball in. Man, I tell you what, he look had some space in. out here in the left flat to do the. And did you see the confusion on the uh, Fort Fry rush? Yes. There was uh It looked like they were almost trying to set up a screen because of the, uh, the linemen seemed to get through pretty easily. So now that's second down. Oh, second. They're, they're calling the uh, Redskins with an ineligible man downfield. Oh, my. I didn't see that. So that's going to back them up another five. Well, I'll tell you, with everybody running around, <laughs> that very possibly could have happened. Yeah, not only was the so Fort Fry con- uh, confused a little bit, I think so were the uh, Caldwell linemen. Okay, three wideouts this time for the Redskins. Back at the 28-yard line, that's, that's Sayre. And Sarah's going to get up to about the 35-yard line. Dropped uh, that time by number 12 for for that one. I tell you what, he's tough to bring down. Not he a is. very young, man, not you, a very big young man. He's built low to the ground you can't and tackle very him strong. High. No, you can't very strong. Him high. He's on the right hip. Gets the ball again, and he's not going to get the first no. down. He's going to be stopped right about the line of scrimmage as the, uh, boy, the cadets were ready ready for that one. As number seven, uh, Zayden Hupp in there on that tackle. So I would say the Redskins are probably going to punt this one, Mike. I would get, yeah. You got 412 to go yeah. here in the second quarter. You don't want to give them great field great position. Great field position, right. Let's see if the cadets come after it. They're shifting around defensively. Now they call timeout. So we'll take a timeout here with 4.03 left to go in the first half. Seven to nothing in favor of the Caldwell Redskins. We'll be back after this. Are you looking for a career path with a growing company? AMG Vanadium is actively recruiting for its Cambridge and Zanesville plants. Come join a company with a strong environmental purpose and commitment to community. To learn more, visit AMG's website at amg-v.com careers. AMG offers a competitive wage and benefit package. Applications are currently being accepted. And back... At the Noble County Fairgrounds, home field of the Caldwell Redskins, who lead this one seven to nothing 
in the first half. 4.03 left to go here. The Redskins faced with a punting situation. Fourth and three with the ball on their own 36-yard line. Coming out of a timeout. And Cale Bender, the quarterback, is also the punter. And is Mike. And he Mike. doesn't get very deep. When he lines up the punt, he's only about Let's seven or eight yards deep, which uh, leaves him kind of susceptible to maybe a block. I, I believe the cadets are coming. Play sure look like yep, it. Yep, boy, they're uh, ready, and they're going on a – Cale not in any hurry to get this snap. There he gets it, fumbles it. Oh, and he's going to have to run it, and he's going to oh. be brought down. So a bad snap again, Mike, causes a, basically a turnover on downs. Uh, they might have outthought themselves right there. I think what they were trying to do was go with the long count and try to draw try Fort Fry offside. offside. And they were having nothing of it, and then a bad snap. Bender unable to get it off, and that's going to give Fort Fry great field position from the Caldwell. 32-yard line here is still three minutes and 57 seconds yeah, to go lifetime, in the second quarter. Lifetime to go here. Yes. So big defensive stand here for the Redskins, Mike. So that's Clayton Miller. He's in the shotgun. Wing T drops back to pass. Throws it deep. Oh, he's got a man open in a wide over, open. Over, Boy, he throwing. had Bender beat by eight Ray yards. Braxton Brown was wide open. Yes. So it drops in complete. Second down and second down and ten for the cadets. But boy, uh, that uh, I'm, I'm I'm sure Clayton Miller'd like to have that one back. Brown came in as the leading receiver for the cadets, 139 yeah. yards and four touchdowns. Well, he, and boy, he could that could have been the fifth he, one right he there. He could have used the used the, he could have added a few yards then. Second and ten, cadets. Snap, little little flat out to. Uh, Boy, big block big made block. out there that time. I think that was number 66. Yep, and that was. Uh, Caleb Riggs. Yeah, yeah that Still was, pretty uh, good pursuit that time by the Redskins, yeah, limiting that to about much. a four yard gain. Yep, give up. So it's third down and about six. Ball's on the 28-yard line of the Redskins. Four down territory here, though, Mike. Without a doubt. Yep. So, Miller goes under center. Sets a man in motion. Gives it to the motion man. And he's going to pick up yards. That's Owen Brown. And he's going to get up to about the 25-yard line before he's knocked, knocked back by Colby Langley. So now the same situation Here we for go. the cadets. Fourth and three, ball on the Redskins 25-yard line, and the cadets in need of a touchdown, Mike. What they so far, they've done a real nice job against uh, the senior running back, Owen Brown, limiting him to only four yards on six carries well, to this point. They've adjusted to that misdirection. They, they, you know what? If you're going to defend the wing tee, you've got to play assignment football. And Absolutely. so far to this point, the Redskins have done a nice job of that. Yeah, you just got to stay in your lane. And that is to... It's, that went to number 12. Uh, Ethan Dusky. Uh, Ethan Dusky, yeah. Let's see where the spot they're, is. They're going to measure. They're going to measure this one. They're going to measure. And the Fort Fry uh, uh, fans are not happy about that. <laughs> they're saying it's a first down. So we'll see. And so did the ball boys down there along the sideline for Fort Fry. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, they don't have a vote. And I think one of those might be my niece's boy. Uh, I can't believe he's down there pulling for the cadets. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't believe that. How could you allow that to happen? <laughs> well. They, first they're going to call it a yeah, first down. down. And the now the yeah. uh, Caldwell coaches are not very excited with that N call. No. And neither were the Caldwell players. They had to look at it three times before they yeah. finally decided that yeah. it was a first down. And now the referees are waving, <laughs> waving the Caldwell coaches back. Yeah. Uh, yep. So it is first and ten. Ball's on the 22-yard line. And here come the cadets up in a hurry. 
As there's Miller under Miller center. Miller up under center. Yep, and there goes Owen oh, Brown. Sweet. And Owen Brown has running room around the right side, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds at about the 14-yard line, I believe. I can't see for that railing. <laughs> I, you, we need to grow a little bit, yeah. don't we, John? I think it's... Uh, That's probably uh, Owen Brown's best carry of the was, evening so I far, believe, six yeah. yards. It's about the... Yeah, they're going to market it about the 14-yard uh, 14, 14 line. Or no, that's about the 16-yard 16 16 yard line. line. So, excuse me. Yep. Little there inside trap again. Yep, and that's going to be uh, Riddle. Ball came out. They're going to call him They're down. They're going to call him down. Ball came out. The referee said he's down. So that moves the ball down to about the 12 yard line, I believe. So it'll be so what, third and about one. That was Langley that they said that made the strip, but, uh, uh, and I think that other official, Mike, was gonna rule the fumble, what recovery out of bounds. I, I believe so. And they're gonna call that another Caldwell Lumber first, first down. down for the so cadets. So they can get a first down, Mike, at about nope. the one yard yes. line. So it's first and 10 at the ball on the 12. So Clayton Miller you know, waits for everything to settle down as he looks over the defense and his offense. Not in any hurry. He seems to be going up under center yep, a lot more than what he was center. early on. Man in motion. And there it goes, gives to the motion man. And he's gonna. I think that's Powell. Austin Powell with his second carry of yep. the night. 5'8", 160 pound senior, and he moves it down to about the eight yard line. So it's second down and about six to go. And John, one thing to keep in mind, the cadets only have one timeout left here in the Absolutely. first half. They've oh already used two. 50 and, and we're under a minute to go. Forgot about the uh, deadly clock. Yep. Kind of the same play to the other side. Right, nice job that time by the front of Caldwell yep, again. Let's see if they use their timeout. Yep, they're going they to are going to use it right out. there. Okay, timeout. So it'll be third down and... He looked like he, he lost a couple on that a, one. Lost a couple, yeah. So the ball back to the 10-yard line. So we'll keep it here and uh, kind of try to figure out what's going to happen here in this last 41 seconds. You know, John, with 40 seconds to go, I don't think anybody here would have thought this would have been a 7 nothing game, especially when that seven points was scored 37 seconds into the game. But uh, both both teams have had their opportunities but just have not been able to capitalize, find some way to, to uh, shoot themselves in the foot. Uh, and uh, I, I'm sure the cadets, uh, Coach Huck, I'm sure has to be a little disappointed, Mike, as uh, they haven't broke anything. No. Nothing. I, I, what, and uh, give, give, give Caldwell, the defensive staff, a lot of credit here because, again, like we said earlier, you know, when you play against this kind of offense, you have assignments that you have to you, maintain. You, it's, you have to be disciplined. You have to stay in your lane. You do, and so far yeah. to this point, they've done a pretty good job of it. Okay, we're getting back ready. Third and eight for the cadets. If Miller in the shotgun, takes the snap, drops back. Oh, my, they got a wide open over there, and that's going to be a touchdown. Cadets, boy. Nice call nice that time ball. by the cadets. Yeah. Yep, so that one went right in. They that was Zayden Huck. Zayden Huck catches the ball, and they run the that little, a little uh, deception to the right side, and they had all kinds of receivers out on the left side, and Huck just waltzes right into Sprinted the end Sprinted to the right and ran that little backdoor let's, screen. i tell you what, once he was out there, nobody. Let, let's see. Uh, the cadets have really not been known as a kicking team, No, Mike. no. This has been kind of their Achilles heel if yeah. they've had one over the years. Yeah. And see, yes, that's that look, a, that's, that's uh, Zayden Huck, Zayden Huck will to attempt, attempt this extra point. Boy, he had got foot into Boy, that he one. Drilled it. It's good. So we're tied with 34 seven seconds left to go here in the first half, 7-7. Seven to seven. So we'll just uh, send it back over here and... Uh, We'll be back right after this. 
Just like on the field, we believe in teamwork with our customers. This is Ashley Rich from the Farmers and Merchants Bank on the Square in Colwell. With our services, you can bank from your home, the office, or even at the stadium. You can sit back and enjoy the game knowing your money is in great hands. Good luck to all the local teams this year from everyone at the Farmers and Merchants Bank. Member FDIC. And back at Colwell High School, the cadets on the board with 334 seconds left to go in the first half on a what was that a 13 yard about a 10 yard, 10 yard, about a 10 pass, yard pass play uh, yeah from clayton miller to huck and uh we're tied at seven seven that was a well-designed play there by coach huck and his staff i tell you drew everybody to the right side and well when they threw the ball back there was nobody, nobody over there to yeah. defend zayden huck yeah they had uh, cadets had two blockers and one receiver and nobody no black jerseys in sight so the cadets will kick it off as Aiden Huck will put his toe into this one and the Redskins are going to take a timeout so we'll keep it here and, uh, and just a, a reminder to, to the uh, listeners back home and those watching that the uh, cadets will receive the kickoff to start the second half good point good point that's those math teachers that are always well, yeah, observing. Always observing. Always <laughs> observing. Yes. Yes. So, what do you think, Mike, living up to your expectations so far? It, it's been a good football game. I, th I don't know that you could ask for a whole lot more. I mean, there's been excitement. <laughs> uh, both teams have been in situations where it looks like they were just about to take over this football game. And, and, and most of the time, I mean, these are two well-coached teams and, and two very good football teams. A lot of skill players. Uh, you've got good offensive, defensive lines both ways. Uh, I mean, I, I, you're I, talking this was supposed to be one of the top games in the Eastern right. District this year, and, and you're right. It's lived up to you're, that billing yeah, so far. Yeah, you're summing it up here, here pretty well so far, uh, uh, in my opinion. Uh, you know, but the, the exciting plays have been – who can make three yards on fourth down? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> and, and when you've got good football teams, yeah. it comes down to that. Yes. Okay, so Huck puts his toe into it, wibble, squibble, bounces up, taken by Colby Lang. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. He ran right over top of somebody. He did indeed with the Ooh, left shoulder. My goodness. Oh, Put that boy. kid at fullback. Yowie, yowie, yowie. I'll bet you somebody's checking to see if he's got all of his teeth. Austin Powell, I guarantee, is seeing stars right now. Uh, he's seeing something. <laughs> wow. So, okay, what do you do here, John, if you're if you're Caldwell? Do you uh, try I to run, go up on top and hit uh, something deep I run, I and, run and risk a out. turnover? I run the clock out. Redskins have it first and ten, ball on their own 40. And we got uh, Bender in the shot. Now he does, he's dropping back, and he... Throws it over the middle. Oh, my. And he, <laughs> that is the poster child of taking your eye off the football. Oh, I'm telling you what. He had some room it. over yeah. here, and that's who's, whose hands you want the ball yes. in right there, and, Braxton and, Dudley. And in this time frame. Oh, my God. Yes. Five seconds, that's that's a good call. That's, that's a very I, good I call there by the I staff. I like the call. I like the call. Boy, I can remember Frank Ritchie at OU. Boy, would he have been on his case. <laughs> Okay, you know, not, second not, and ten. Not much risk in that play. No. And the, no. you only stand to gain some good yardage. Yep. Back to pass. And Bender's going to get a run. He's going to running room, and he's going to run out of bounds at about the 48-yard line of the cadets. That's with enough AP. for a first down. First down for the, yep. Another Caldwell number, number first down. That's number four for the Redskins here in the first half. 18 seconds left to go in this one. So, uh, well, they mark it back at the 50 where he went out of bounds. Just don't want to don't want to say the 51. Not the 51. No. no, not tonight. Bender, first and 10, ball on the 50, in the shotgun, takes the snap, drops straight back. Not much pressure, intercepted. And there it is. There's the interception. And, and you got a tackle out of bounds. They're going to tack another 15 yeah. yards. Yep. On to the end of that. And now we got another flag. And that was uh, Braxton Brown on the interception. And there's two flags over there. So, 10, 11 seconds left in this foot first half. Well, I guess. I know one of those was uh, 
a late hit out of bounds. I don't know what that second flag was done to. Whether one, and the other one must have been a, a, a chirp. Somebody's probably said something yeah. that they shouldn't have said. And then there's one flag laying right here in the middle. Yes, and that, that surely wasn't what took place down there. So. so the referees are huddled up at the 48-yard line, all of them. That's not good. <laughs> let's, let's see what they come up with <laughs> <Yeah>. here. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you what, if they if they would tack both those penalties on against yards. the uh, Redskins, that would give Fort Fry the ball down around the 20 yard and, line, and and that uh, could and be disaster. Clayton Miller uh, has an arm. Yes, he does. He can throw it. And uh, Braxton Brown has uh, shown that he can throw it. Dylan Wheeler came out here, and I think he was going to try to pick that one flag up, and the Fort Fry fans were not very happy with that. <laughs> well. I, I, uh, he didn't mean anything no. by it. Yeah, yeah, that's like, uh, you know, if you don't mean to, you don't get penalized. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boy, this, this is, uh, this, uh, I worry about with that when the uh, officials yeah, when spend this much to, when time. I, yeah, and all of them together, that's scary. Yeah. Oh. And they're one points this way and one points that way. So, here they come. Here We're we going get to get a signal. All from right. Them. Maybe. Okay, as they walk out on the on the sea here in the middle of the field. He must know he's on TV tonight. He must. Yeah. He's getting a lot of air time. <laughs> 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 oh, my. And they still haven't uh, made a signal. Now the referee's pointing toward the Redskins and the other one. Okay, here we go. Maybe. No. Let's talk about a little bit more. Yeah. Well, they're walking over to the uh, linesman. They're, they're talking the to uh, Coach Rucker, head coach Chance Rucker over there along the sideline. Well, not exactly. I think they're talking to the head linesman over there that made the initial call. But if they don't know, I'm sure we don't know. No. <laughs> You know, so, John, I said this could be big depending on where this ball ends up. This could give uh, the cadets a yeah, good opportunity to get yeah. back on the board. Okay, we got a personal foul. We saw that. Yeah. Oh, roughing the passer. Roughing the passer. That wow. I didn't see that, but. No, of course, we were looking at yeah, the ball we down here. We looked at the interception, yeah. and that took yeah. place. Be and that makes sense where that flag's yeah. thrown at. Now we got another personal. Uh, offsetting personal, personal offset. fouls. So, so we're going to mark off 15 yards. And I don't for the roughing think, the or is it 10 yards for roughing the passer? And I don't think Coach Huck is very happy. No, we're going to go 15. And, that, and I tell you what, now that's now big because now it's going to give yeah. the Redskins a chance for Bender to throw the ball into the end zone. And Coach Huck is wanting an explanation from the referee. So the Redskins are going to go. Trips to the left, yeah. twins to the right. Nobody in the backfield with Bender. So whatever he said satisfied Coach Huck. So Bender is the only one in, in the backfield. 11 seconds left to go to halftime. 7-7 seven, seven here at the fairground. Snap, Bender back, throwing it long. Intercepted again. And here comes, yeah, that's Brown again. That was Clayton again. Miller, I was. Yeah. Yeah. And that runs the clock out. First half is over with here in this one. And it's tied 7-7 seven to seven here at the fairgrounds. And with that, we'll send it back to the station for ONN and halftime activities as things have heated up here a little <laughs> yeah. at the fairgrounds. We'll be right back, folks. Just like on the field, we believe in teamwork with our customers. This is Ashley Rich from the Farmers and Merchants Bank on the Square in Colwell. With our services, you can bank from your home, the office, or even at the stadium. You can sit back and enjoy the game knowing your money is in great hands. Good luck to all the local teams this year from everyone at the Farmers and Merchants Bank. Member FDIC. 
Hi, this is Stan from Dudley Satellites, your local dish authorized retailer. Our community is our family, and we are committed to supporting causes that matter here in southeastern Ohio. That's why we are proud supporters of high school sports. It's just one way we are helping to make a difference right here in our own backyard. Call us at 740-581-1191 or visit 510 Cumberland Street, Caldwell, to learn more about how we are supporting our community through Dish Cares. Everyone's looking for an encouraging sign in today's economy. The fact is, you'll find one right here in Caldwell at State Farm Agent Sue Snow's office. Because State Farm agents like Sue have been here helping people protect the things that matter most. That's why more people trust State Farm, and we consider that a very good sign. See State Farm Agent Sue Snow at 400 East Street, Caldwell. This is Russ Abel's. This time of the year, there are two big reasons homeowners call us here at Abel's. The first is for annual maintenance. Our technicians know how to keep heating systems running perfectly. Our detailed tune-up and safety check will help you avoid a breakdown and improve your system's energy efficiency. The other reason is it is time to replace your heating. And if that's you, right now we can help you save with a new high efficiency system. So wherever you're at, we're ready to help. For heating and air conditioning, call Abel's. This year, the Southeastern Med Cancer Services team is celebrating 30 years of being accredited by the National Commission on Cancer. Earning this accreditation and maintaining it for three decades is a testament to their team's quality outcomes, dedication, commitment, and care for their patients and community. Learn more by visiting seormc.org today. I was sitting in my car and it wouldn't start. I lifted the hood and the engine was falling apart. What would I do? My eyes filled with tears. And on the radio I heard of West 40 by pay here. Where for a little money down and a little each week. I could have a car, nice, shiny, and sleek. So I walked in the door and I put the money down. Now I got a nice car that I can drive around. West 40 by pay here will help rebuild your credit. The corner of Dewey and Route 40 in Cambridge, don't you forget it. West 40 Auto Sales, corner of Route 40 and Dewey Avenue in Cambridge, is home of the guaranteed credit approval, with most loans approved while you wait. Go to their website to fill out an online loan application, west40autosales.com. You'll also find their weekly special listed there season, you know, just can, how far can Darion Fair take them? Let's go down to Division Three. Villa Angela St. Joe sits at 6-1, and one, but just 13th there in Region 9. If you're them, just, just get in and then see what happens, right? Yeah, just get in. What do we know, what do we know about uh, Jeff Roski's teams? You know, they're going to be feisty. I, I always call Jeff Roski the uh, program uh, reinvigorator because it seems like that's all he does is just goes into different programs. He was at Maple Heights. He uh, rejuvenated that program. He went to Euclid, rejuvenated that program. I mean, uh, the uh, VASJ Vikings have a, a sophomore, uh, Kylan Stubles. Uh, he's a quarterback. Uh, he is fantastic. I think he's probably one of the best quarterbacks VASJ has had uh, since maybe an Elvis Gerback. Uh, it's crazy to say. They've uh, only won seven straight in 10-2 and two on the season. So uh, they had a big comeback win uh, against Bishop Hartley uh, was the team. So uh, they are in position to uh, make some noise, too. Yes, that was the team, Dale, we know. Division four, let's go there next in a team that you're very familiar with. I know your son plays for him, Glenville, 7-0, and first in Region 14, and they are rolling. Yeah, I was just joking with guys out here in the studio uh, after I just finished the show, 7-0. and I said, hey, I, it probably would be in everyone's best interest uh, that Glenville goes independent. You know, just get out of the Cleveland Senate League, uh, allows some of those programs to rebuild themselves up, uh, and you know it allows Glenville to have uh, you know to reschedule their own uh, season matchups, as well as you know just the competitive advantage that it would be able to uh, you know add to that program. Glenville's already beaten two Division Three teams, and they uh, also feature what I believe is four of the best. Uh, players in Northeast Ohio, starting with uh, Arville Reese. He's going the Ohio State commit, Buckeye commit. Uh, he's a senior this year. Uh, he's going to be going down to Ohio State. And then you got the junior class, which is my favorite class, and watching these young men since they were six, seven, eight years old. Um, and that features uh, Bryce West, 
the number one corner in class of 2024 as far as state of Ohio. Um, and Deshante Jones, a running back who's probably the second best running back behind uh, Hoban's uh, Lamar Sperling. And then finally, you know, my son who, you know, plays uh, over at Cleveland Glenville, Demarion Witten. Um, he's a what they call Mr. Can Do It All. Uh, they seem to be in position to do some uh, damage in the postseason. Dale Davison, we appreciate you hopping on, talking some Cleveland area high school football with us this evening, okay? Yes, thank you. And we'll be right back on the Ohio News Network. Bex recognizes this week's player with heart, Aiden Harbage from Global Impact STEM Academy for his commitment and passion on the field and within the farming community. I've been playing baseball um, since I was in Little League T-ball. Something about it, being able to go three for ten and it still be considered successful, uh, kind of like farming and how there's ups and downs and it's really just all about how you look at it. Yes, Aiden has seen plenty of ups and downs in baseball and in farming, even at his own farm. I myself have recently started the past two years. I farm my own 14 acres that I cash rent. So I kind of do that. I'm the farm owner. I have all the responsibilities of one, paying the rent, such as checking. I plan it, uh, hover around the farm a lot. And from there, it's just kind of, I've grown for the love of it. His years in FFA will help in his future, where he plans to attend Iowa State, Texas A&M, or Mississippi State for animal science or ranch management. At Bex, we are and will remain farmers at heart. From the Ohio News Network, this is the Ohio Education Association tonight in high school football. Named best sports program in the country by the National Association of State Radio Networks. Tonight in high school football is presented by Bex Hybrids and by Ohio for Responsible Gambling. Now here's your host, Skip Mossick. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight in high school football's halftime reports, where this evening we'll chat a little Cleveland high school football with our buddy Dale Davison from our Cleveland affiliate. Dale will join us next on the Ohio News Network. Every farmer has their reason for why they do what they do. For Becks, it's faith, family, and farming. Since 1937, the Beck family and family of employees have been committed to honoring God and helping farmers succeed. Farming is full of extremes, and we face the challenges with hard work and steadfast determination, delivering quality line of products backed by legendary customer service. We look forward to standing by your side, supporting you as you live out the life you were meant to live. Bex, when it comes to farming, we believe in something more. I'm Scott DeMauro, president of the Ohio Education Association, and on behalf of the OEA's 120,000 members, we're proud to bring you tonight's game. OEA members teach in Ohio's public schools and universities. We drive your kids' buses and serve them lunch. We're school nurses, custodians, librarians, and more. And we coach your kids on the field. We believe in great public schools for every student, and we believe our team is always stronger when we stand together, just as we have for 175 years. And back at Caldwell Municipal Stadium. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never heard it called that, but <laughs> oh, it's municipal. We can call it anything. We can it, call it anything we want it, to, John. It's municipal. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, seven seven at halftime in this highly weighted football game between, uh, you know, really uh, two of the most successful teams this year in the football in southeastern Ohio here. And so far it's lived up to its uh, expectations. It's tied 7-7 as the cadets got got in uh, to the end zone with less than a minute left, and the Redskins scored in the first minute of the game. You know, ironically, John, the uh, Redskins scored 37 seconds into the game, Don't tell and the uh, cadets tell. scored with 37 <laughs> seconds to go in the second quarter. Only a Again, a, a, only a math only teacher can come up with stats like that. Would, yeah, but uh, I, you know what? It's lived up to the billing. Uh, you know, a lot of people were kind of questioning Caldwell. Like you know, we talked earlier with the schedule they played. Didn't really know how good they were, but I'm telling you what, they've stepped up and proven that they're a quality football team here in the first half. No question about it. Now, win, lose, or draw. Uh, well, and I guess we've taken the draw out of it. But, uh, okay, then, uh, Math Major, uh, give us some first-half stats. All right, John. And, and, and as on the scoreboard, the stats are pretty equal also here. Uh, first of all, for the visiting cadets of Fort Fry High School, they rushed the ball 23 times in the first half for 65 yards. The leading ground carrier for the cadets was Brit Brendan Riddle, six carries for 37 yards. The uh, – Redskins have really done a nice job containing the leading ground carrier, Owen Brown, 
for the Cadets. He had eight carries for eight yards in the first half. Uh, through the airways, the sophomore Clayton Miller, four out of six, 26 yards, one touchdown, and no interceptions. Uh, leading receivers, Braxton Brown, two catches, 16 yards, and Zayden Huck, one catch for 10 yards and a touchdown. The uh, Cadets had seven first downs in the first half, were penalized two times for 20 yards. The uh, homestanding uh, Redskins of Caldwell High School uh, rushed the ball 16 times for 62 yards. The leading uh, ground carrier for the Redskins, senior Marshall Sayer, eight carries, 47 yards. Uh, Cale Bender, the junior quarterback, three out of eight through the airways, 63 yards, one touchdown, and he did get credit for the one interception, but that was one, you know, that was a Hail Mary at the end, so you really can't fault him for that one. That was just one of those yeah. kind of throwaway that yep. got picked off. And he, you know, you got to take a chance there. With 10 seconds to go, you got to give it, you know, throw it up in well, the yeah. air and hope for the best. Yeah. Uh, Dylan Wheeler, the top receiver for the uh, Redskins there in the first half, two catches, 61 yards, and, of course, that big 41-yard touchdown catch, 37 seconds into the game. And I think that really took Fort Fry by surprise. It did. It, I think it took a lot of people yes. here by surprise and how easily it went down the court. It did, yeah. Uh, we barely got a chance to get settled into our seats, and well, it was a know, seven just, on the board. We just weren't looking for Wheeler to be, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the key man in that, in that uh, series. But, you know, we talked before the game. That's, that's one thing that the Redskins are blessed with. They have a, an abundance of uh, skill players. <laughs> and, and he's one you don't think about, but he, he's got a lot of ability. He's fast. Uh, he returns punch for him, returns kickoffs. Uh, he, can, he can line up as a running back. He can and, line up as a receiver. And he's uh, physical. And he's physical, he's yes. physical. Yes. So uh, just another one, but uh, a pretty even battle. I mean, you just look at the stats, and it was an even first half. And thus we're sitting here at 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, and uh, like you said, the uh, cadets will receive – uh, the second half kickoff, so we'll go to that. We'll take a moment. Uh, they said that uh, uh, Nurse Now up in Bryan, Ohio, was listening to him. That's almost uh, that, that's almost uh, foreign territory. Uh, it is. Bryan. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're just awfully, awfully close to that state up north. I've got a feeling we've got as many uh, viewers and <laughs> listeners out there tonight is uh, what Caldwell has had for quite some time because there are a lot of people have, have, have had this date circled on their calendar for a long time, uh, wanting, wanting, to, wanting to really know. Our uh, 231 people on YouTube alone, he's, uh, he and, I tell you, and what a nice crowd we've got here tonight. Oh, yeah. The stands are yeah. pretty well full here, yeah. uh, here yeah. under the grandstand and uh, – you know, this, this, this is a luxury. It's, it's nice to have a roof over your head here. You don't have to worry about the weather. And i got a feeling that's one thing that they're not going to have in their new facility, well, if we get that new facility. Yeah, that's, uh, of course, a, uh, that's a question mark here. Uh, I hope they do. I mean, oh, the, the kids I, are they, long overdue and, and, and you know, well, uh, in, in all sports. You, uh, having been an administrator uh, here and other places, you know uh, what a problem it is to administer, oh. uh, you know, a field that is not your own. It, it, it's, it's really amazing that they've had the success that they have had over the years Absolutely. here with this football program, with, uh, with what they've had to deal with, but they've overcome those, and it would really be nice to see them have their own facility that's something they can be proud of, uh, hopefully here in the near future. And, yeah, and we hope that that, that comes to pass. The, the ground is there. Now it just needs to be developed, and we'll, we'll see what happens. So those of you that are listening, <laughs> if you've got some extra money in your pocket, yeah. feel free yeah. to donate. You yeah. know, we, we, yeah. the, uh, the administration, the uh, kids, and the, and the faculty here at Caldwell would sure appreciate your support. As we listen to the Caldwell High School marching band performing, we'll go ahead and uh, – Give her back to our good colleague here and let him take over and uh, old Cooper here and do whatever he wants to for a while. We got about five minutes and 30 seconds before the second half begins. It's tied 7-7 here at the fairgrounds. 
Your home and your car are likely your two biggest investments. Protecting them from unexpected damage is a prime concern to WB Green Insurance. They are proud to represent Westfield Insurance, a financial service organization that provides insurance products for your home, auto, and business. Sharing knowledge, building trust is Westfield Insurance's pledge to their customers, along with personalized claim service that's fast and friendly. To learn how Westfield can help with your insurance needs, talk to WB Green Insurance today. I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, and I'm still mad at timeshare companies. For over a decade, I've been fighting to clean up the timeshare industry by getting folks out of bad timeshares. But after all those battles, I'm still asked, how do they sell timeshares for $25,000 when they're available online for only a dollar? Here's how they do it. They lie. They tell you things like, timeshare's a great investment. You can go anywhere, anytime, or your maintenance fees will never go up. Everything they do to get you to sign a timeshare timeshare agreement is part of a well-planned trap. If you've ever been held hostage at a timeshare presentation and bought, Wesley Financial Group is here to help. To date, we've canceled timeshares for over 16,000 families. And I guarantee you this, we'll cancel your timeshare or you'll pay nothing. Call now for your free timeshare cancellation guide. 800-572-3344. That's 800-572-3344. 800-572-3344. Time keeper, that's a tip. <laughs> and back at the Noble County Fairgrounds. And we're locked into a good one here tonight as we expected. It's seven to seven as we get ready for the second half kickoff. Still got about three minutes left here before we go to that. So so I'll be interested to see what kind of adjustments both both gonna, coaches uh, make here at halftime. Uh, they, they both have to be a little disappointed in the fact that they probably felt like they had opportunities maybe to get a few more points put on the board. But the other side of that, I think they've really got to be pretty pleased with the defensive efforts. Uh, both coaches have to be pleased with that. I mean, you're, you're talking about teams that came in, in here. Uh, Fort Fry was averaging – 46.7 points a game while well, the Redskins came in here averaging uh, I had them at 52.3 points a game so everybody's coming here thinking first of all if it's going to be close it's going to be a shootout but uh, it's really become a you know a, a battle to the two defenses and uh, they both held up pretty good so far so far as the Redskins we've uh, you know as you've noticed have uh, you know pretty well adjusted to the misdirection they out, have. Of that, out of that wing T uh, that they ran. And I, 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 I'm I, sorry, uh, that I, I was talking about Ward's Hold. Well, he ran the single wing. Single wing, now, uh, you're ta- now you're, now you're, now you're yeah, dating yourself. I, you're talking I about am. the single wing. I am, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of listeners out there who have no idea what we're talking about when we talk about the single wing. Well, uh, Newt Rockney ran it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's pretty, he's pretty current. <laughs> But, uh, you, you know, and, and it was uh, uh, when they ran that, uh, they were the only team in the area that ran it. Yeah. So when you went to play Newcomerstown, you had to change your whole philosophy of, of, of how, how to, uh, you know, how to defend it. Well, and that's one thing that, that Coach Huck has done down at Fort Fry. He instilled this wing T offense when he took over 15 years ago. And like I said, the program he's developed, even their little bitty teams and stuff, the third and fourth graders, fifth, sixth graders, they all run the same pro- they, they all run the same offense. They all use the same terminology. And that's how you build a program. And it's paid off for them down there. And, well, uh, and what they run, hardly anybody runs this anymore, no, the type of no, offense that they run. Said, so so you you've, got, got, you've got extra planning. And, and you've got to give the Redskins credit so far and their staff for the job they've done defensively because uh, – They've done a nice job, you know, containing that running game of the cadets so far. Yeah, you know, and, and as you, you mentioned, they, they have really, really contained Owen Brown. And, uh, you know, the cadets, I'm sure, you know, they pretty much always expect Owen Brown to break a couple 
uh, during the game. That's not to say he won't. John, uh, he came in here with 958 yards on the ground and 12 touchdowns in the first seven games against good competition. So he is a quality back. So if yep. the, I, th I think that's a big key. The, if the Redskins have a chance there, they're going to have to continue to contain him because, like you said, almost every game so far, he's broken one or two big plays each game. Uh, okay, let me ask you. I I'll just put this out to you. Don't make it very tough. Uh, me? Tough? Uh, <laughs> uh, wear down. It it's going to be interesting because this is the first time all year the Redskins that the Redskins fine. have had to play four quarters of football because and usually hard. by now and you're hard. you're looking usually yeah. at most of their games they've had a running clock at this I, point in time. So would, that, would, would, if uh, if you were Coach Huck, would you bring that up at halftime? I, I think I would. I would. I said, hey, I you really know the, the the advantage is in our quarter. Yeah. We've got to go out there now. Yeah, and, we've, uh, we've been here. We've been yes. Seven, seven weeks in a row they've been there, uh, other than maybe last week. They did uh, pretty, put a pretty good shellacking on uh, Point Pleasant last well, that, week. And four, uh, uh, Point Pleasant fumbled four times, and uh, the cadets scored on all four of those fumbles. So, and that, that's the one thing that the uh, – another thing that the Redskins have been able to do so far, they've held on the football. Yes. They've had one turnover, and that was that, the uh, the last play there the first half. And, and that's really – that's uh, – We'll concede that. Yeah, one. We, we will concede we that will one. Concede good, that good, one. Uh, good way to phrase it. Yep. Yeah, that was just one that uh, I'm going to throw it up, and if my man can get it, fine. And boy, I, I saw him too when Bender let loose that football. Someone just pretty much cut him right in half. Yeah, I yes, yeah, from the waist down. He uh, didn't yes. really get a chance to get his feet set and yes. get very much on that football. See, Owen, Owen Brown is going back. Uh, along with Braxton, Braxton Brown. Brown. Yeah, so. so the Brown boys are back. They are back. And let's see, is that going to be, that's going to be Tice Duvall again, I think. He's going to tee it up. Kind of like, squibbed that last yeah, one. It'll be did. interesting to see what he does here, decide to do with this kickoff. Yeah. Uh, so the officials have uh, split, the, split the huddle at the 50-yard line and going to their position. So Folks, we're ready to get this second half underway, so don't go away, whatever you do, because I have a feeling that this is going to be a pretty good uh, 24 minutes Just of football. I hope we have the same effort, yes. and I'm sure we'll have the same effort yeah. both ways that we had in the first half. So I think we've touched on about everything that we know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we don't know a whole and lot, John. We don't John. know a whole lot, no. But, we're having but we, will, we will admit it. It, oh, this it, has been fun. You know, yeah. they, they, these are yeah. these are fun games to oh, do. Oh, absolutely. You know, you, those absolutely. ones where it's fifty-six nothing, yeah. and you know, early in the third. That's that's yeah. boring. All this you is, do uh, is go. Come on, clock. Yeah, really. Yeah, this has been fun. So it is going to be Tice Duvall who will kick it, and uh, that's Owen Brown and Braxton Brown deep. So the official has given him the ball and. Here we go. Tice is ready to put it in, and I believe Tice is a straight-on kicker, isn't he? Yes, well, just a little, not, not much, not yeah, much he, at all. Yep, Lou grows a type. Oh, my, he whiffed it. They got it, but I'm tough. And it did go 10 yards. He kicked that from the 40. They recovered at the 48 of Fort Fry. Yep. So... So the Redskins have it at the cadet 48-yard line again. So same thing as we started the game with, Mike. Exactly. You yeah. know, and here's the thing. Uh, that's yeah. exactly what he did the last time. So you would think that the uh, cadets were expecting that. But, yeah, boy, that was well executed. Yes. So they are going to take over yep. at the Fort Fry 48, 48 here to start the so second here half. Here we go as Bender goes in to the shotgun. First snap of the second half. It's a good snap, and it's Bender. And he's got some running room. He's going Boy. to pick up about six or seven. Good lower body strength yeah. that time by Bender. He's just listed at 165 pounds, but he had half of the uh, defensive front of Fort Fry on his back that time. He did. He takes it down to about the 43-yard line of the cadets, second down and about five. 
Here is, again, a uh, surprising start to the second half. <laughs> similar to, like you said, similar to what we yeah. saw to begin the game. Uh-oh. Now we got an we got a, Yeah, we got something here with... Uh, uh, got a mouthpiece with, problem, maybe. It's number 80. That's 66. 66. That's Caleb That's Caleb Riggs. Yeah. They, He's being replaced by 76, John Stevens. Yep. Didn't lose much weight on No, they that. didn't, no. Maybe a little quickness. So, again... Bender is going to run it again. Goes off the right. Big. He, he's got Boy. the room down the left side, and he gets down to about the tw 21. They're going to mark it at about the 21-yard line of the cadets. That's about a 20-yard 20 20 yard for carry again by Cale Bender. So the Redskins knocking on the door here again early in this third quarter. Boy, good read that time by Bender that time, John. Looked like it originally set it to go off tackle. Right. He saw an opening outside and used his speed to, uh, to pick up a nice gain that time. Bender. Oh, it's intercepted. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh -oh, and this could be trouble. It's, that's, uh, that's Brown. Brown in the 30, the 20, and finally tripped up by Sayer. As Sayre got him at about the 23-yard uh, line. And that reception was by Bra interception. Second one, well, Braxton Brown. I don't know who had the first one, but uh, a turnover by the Redskins. Well, Braxton Brown had one, but remember it got called yeah, back got because called of the rough. Back. And we've got a flag down here, looks like. Yes, we do. And that's going to probably be a hold or a block in the back. Yep. Let's see. Up, the official picked it up. Maybe it just fell out. Maybe, yeah. Boy, well, big anyway, break they're, here. They're marking it. They're marking it right there at the 24-yard uh, line of. So Clayton Miller goes under center. Man in motion. Ball, a little misdirection to the right side. And finally, a little extracurricular. He's knocked down. And who, I didn't, was that Owen Brown? That was uh, Austin Powell. Austin Powell on the carry. Picks up about, oh, about eight on that carry. Second down and about two. Ball is on the 15-yard line of the Redskins after that interception return by Braxton Brown. Still 7-7. Seven, seven. There's a handoff to Owen. Owen Brown, Owen Brown headed for the end zone, and he's in. There, yep, they signal touchdown, so a 15-yard touchdown run by Owen Brown to put the cadets on top at 13-7. to And uh, that was a pretty much a determined run by Owen Brown. Boy, he, he turned the corner. He saw the goal line, and you weren't going to deny him. Nope. Yeah, he put that right shoulder down and said, boys, I'm coming in. So they I run this. I don't see any flags as they line no, up. No, like, they run this little muddle huddle. Yeah. You've got. Uh, Who used to do? Somebody in the in the college level used to do that. Now they get ready to spot it. And again, uh, that's yeah, Zayden Huck. Zayden Huck will go for the kick. Big extra point. Here. Clayton Miller's a holder. And it's got a lot of foot into it, and it's good. So the cadets take the lead, 14 to seven, with. Ten minutes left to go here in the third quarter as they convert a Redskin turnover. So with that being said, we'll take a timeout and be back right after this. Most of us are faced with uncertainty every day. Your job, your finances, sporting events, schooling for your children, and so much more. With so much uncertainty surrounding you, there's one auto dealership that you can be certain about, and that's Doan Ford. You can be certain that you'll always get a great deal and the best service afterwards. In business for nearly 60 years has given Doan Ford the reputation of being a strong, reliable dealership. Be certain. Choose Doan Ford online at DoanFord.com. Okay, the cadets here at the fairgrounds have turned a turnover into a touchdown, so they take the lead with 10 minutes to go here in the third quarter, 14 to 7. And heck of a, heck of a return by 
by uh, Braxton Brown, and had not been for Dylan Sayre, he would he would have been in the end zone. Exactly. He uh, yeah. good 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 job hustling downfield. Yeah. Of course, just prolonged the agony a little yeah. bit because uh, we said down. Owen Owen Brown in pretty much every game this year has broken one or two. Well, when he turned the corner and saw yeah. the end zone, you weren't going to stop him. All right, Zayden Huck will kick it off for the Cadets. Gets the foot into it, high end over end. Bring, it's Wheeler, takes it at about the 11, and he's going to be driven out of bounds at about the 29-yard line. So now for the first time in this game, John, the Redskins find themselves on the wrong side oh, of the score, yeah. and so we're going to see how they respond to this adversity because the – I was going to say it's the first time all year that they've trailed, but that's not true. They no. trailed the first yeah. drive of the first game when the trail trail exactly yeah. went up on them seven nothing. That was this is the only second time now that they faced yeah. the deficit. Nine fifty four left to go in the third quarter. Redskins have it on their own twenty nine yard line as they come up, and let's see. I believe Kale Bender is going under center. Sayre, the only running back, three wide outs. Sayre gets it, and he's tackled immediately. Wow. That's By Caleb Bailey that Caleb met, Bailey. Yeah, met that's, Sayre before he could get started. Yeah, that uh, uh, we would call that a slow developing play. Yes. The defense calls it a fast developing play. Loss of about two. And they've not been able to do that to Sayre very not many times Not very many tonight. times, no. So look for that to be rectified here shortly, I would think. So the Redskins break the huddle. Bailey listed a 6'3", 252. Boy, yeah. I tell you what, quick that move that time. Wheeler in the slot. Back. Bender in the shotgun. Good snap. Drop straight back. Oh, almost oh set up a little... A little screen, and it was dropped, and Owen Brown was in the middle of the defense. There that was for, almost disaster for yes, the Redskins. I, yes. I tell you what, they, uh, they had that play scouted because they were right there all over that one. So brings up third and 12, ball on the Redskins' own 27-yard line. Play comes in from the sideline. John, this is huge. After you just gave up a touchdown, yeah. you don't want to go three and out and give yeah. the ball right back to the Cats. Ben, uh, Bender in the shotgun. Sayre on his, on his right hip. Three wide outs to the left, one to the right. Bender drops straight back. Throws up field. Incomplete. Incomplete. And he was under, under pressure that time by, by number 56 uh, for, the, uh, for the Cadets. That was... Uh, Trevor McCutcheon. So that brings up fourth and 12 with the ball on the 27 for the Redskins. So they're going to have to punt it as uh, number seven drops back. And again, as we, said, as we said before, Bender only gets about seven or eight yards deep. And uh, he's been pressured a couple times on. Oh, my good, that Oh, my. Disaster. Heck. Oh, no. Uh, and. Bender wisely Smart kicks, move. kicks it out of the end zone. Smart move for a safety. Very, very smart move by Kale Bender. That might loom big. We're going to find out yes. because you, uh, yes. boy, he doesn't do that. The last thing he wanted there was them to recover for a touchdown. Yes. So you'll give up, gladly People give up give, two gladly instead of six. give up two. Absolutely. So, man. That snap was off. way over Bender said. He had no opportunity I at was, all to I get that I was watching one. the uh, uh, cadet rush, and uh, I heard you <laughs> oh. gasp. So, the time I got around, the ball was just about to the goal line. Now. Yeah. That's 8.54, so the cadets take the lead. Well, they've taken it off of the scoreboard but the official did signal the safety he did and they are conferring again now the kick will come uh-oh now the flag is thrown so now what's the call that's a great question something that way So they've moved him back for the kick 
after the safety. So the, the scoreboard did put the, the two points back on the board. The cadets lead at 16 to seven with 8.54 here to go in the third quarter. And the Redskins will kick it from their 10 yard line. I just wonder, and, and I'm not sure, John, but I wonder, are you allowed to kick the ball out of the back of the end zone like that? Uh, that may have been the penalty have, because, uh, and it was only a five-yard penalty because you're going to kick from the 15 instead but, of the 20. But if that were the case, so wouldn't they have got the ball then? In well, no, he, he, I think they've got to give him the safety because he kicked it in the end zone. Fair catch off the punt. Braxton Brown makes a fair catch on the 45-yard line of Fort Fry. So the cadets will have it again coming off of the safety on the snap over the quarter or the punter's head uh, for the Redskins, alertly kicked through the end zone uh, and uh, saved themselves a touchdown or a touchdown perhaps. John, I think this drive right here is crucial for it, the Redskin I, defense. If they're I, going to remain in this football game, they need a stop here. I like your thinking. Very much so. Red, uh, they have it. Little Owen, inside trap. Owen That's Brown, he spins away from a pack or two. Going to pick up a yard or two, but boy, wrapped up pretty good by uh, Col Col Jace, uh, Ch Jace Norman and Colby Langley on the tackle. Again, good job that time by the Redskin front, you know, maintaining their lanes, lanes. and not going for those flakes because uh, Miller does a nice job handling the football back there. And... Uh, yeah, and the uh, cadet running backs do a good job carrying they out do. their face. They do. They yeah. do. They're well, well coached. they've done it forever. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Miller in the backfield. Oh, throws it. Oh, caught. What a catch. What a catch. What a catch. What a catch by Braxton Brown. As he laid out for that one, folks, and caught it on about the 24-yard line of the Redskins, and I couldn't see who the defender was, but it goes, it's it spotted on the 24 yard line. Another uh, Caldwell Lumber first down for the cadets as Miller comes up under center now, one back in the backfield. He rolls again Ar and arches is up into the end zone, overthrows his intended, intended, intended receiver, Zayden Huck. He Boy, was, John, I don't know why, but he kind of quit running the route. I think if yeah. he continues to run, I think the ball might be on the money. Well, uh, But the, he kind of slowed down there about the two-yard line. He was defended there by Braxton Dudley Miller, and uh, Alex Hurley. Miller faked back there, and I think that took him out of his pattern. I, I, I think you're right. I think Zayden Huck uh, thought he was going to tuck it down. That's only the third incompletion Sounds for the good, sophomore. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Second and ten. Miller in the shotgun. This is Brown, around the right side. He's still running. Gets back to about the line of scrimmage. Maybe maybe picked up two yards, flag on the play in the holding area. Yeah, that's that's they, going to be the call against the, the cadets. Cold, so that's going to be a holding call in, against the cadets. That will back him up 10. That'll take it back to about the 34 yard line, I believe. Let's see if the officials strides are the same as mine. Uh, 33, or yeah, 34. All right. 33. 33 yard line. 740 to go. Second down now, and about 16 or 17 to go for the cadets as they are in the Redskins territory. And like Mike Plasiak has alluded to you, that uh, defensive stand of a necessity for the Redskins on this series, we think. We think. So again, Miller. And he's got it complete to number 12, Ethan Dusky. And he had a lifetime to throw it. And that's going to be down to the two yard line. So a 31 yard pass completion to uh, Ethan Dusky. That's the second 30-yard pass yeah. play here in this series. So uh, Coach Huck has opened up the offense, Mike. Uh, he's found the weakness, I believe. I, I think, think so. He's, he's, the, uh, so the Redskins or the uh, Cadets have it. First and goal on the two. Man in motion. 
and they give it to Brown, and Brown's not going to make it. No, he's, he's going to lose a couple, maybe. He's going to lose a couple yards. Yep, that's Colby Langley uh, in there, Ethan Carpenter, Jace Norman, that whole uh, front of the Redskins' defensive line, and they are going to have to stiffen up their back right now. The heck with your stiff upper lip. You better yeah, get you a better, stiff, stiff upper that's back. That's right. Do not want to give a touchdown up here. Second down and goal from about. I hear go call the that no gain. You're going to put it back on the two. Yes. Yeah. So again, Miller comes up under center. Number 12, Dusky in the backfield. Man in motion. Miller. And let's see, Madden, where, I think see that's, if he uh, any forward progress. He didn't get in. Yeah, he, he moves it down to about to one. And again, that same uh, same triage of, uh, is that the right word, triage or trio? <laughs> anyway, several of the Redskins hit him. You're talking. You can use whatever <laughs> terminology you want. Anyway, there was three of them. There was three of them. Yeah. <laughs> Third, third down and about one. Let's see who they give it to. I knew who I would give it to, but then I'm not out there. And there it is. And there's a touchdown. And that goes to Owen, Owen Brown. Brown. The sweep to the left. And as you can see, uh, Owen Brown is not to be denied. As that increases the cadet lead to 22 to seven over the Redskins with three, 531 to go here in the third quarter. The uh, cadets looking over to see whether to go for go for uh, two or uh, or one, and they are going to go for one as Aiden Huck sets the ball down. Uh oh, uh oh! I think we got a flinch. I think we I think did. We I think that flinch. was uh, was that was Ethan Crock out here on the end. No, I thought he was drawn off. I thought I thought that left end. Uh, they're going to call. They're going to call offside against. Okay, us. They, okay. Uh, boy, I thought that uh, offensive end moved. Now, what do you do if you're Coach Huck? Well, he has declined the penalty, which kind of surprises me. If he would have taken it, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if he had maybe for gone it. for two. Yeah, so they're still going but, for the one, down and up, and looks good. It is good. So it's 23. Well, well, that makes it a two possession. The Redskins would have to score. Uh, will have to score two touchdowns and and two two, two point conversions. Yes. Yeah, so they've uh, so they've that, got their work cut out. They've so got plenty of time. Oh, there's plenty a lifetime. of time. Five thirty one left to go in this one. We'll send it over here to Cooper and let him uh, do his thing for you folks back there. Are you looking for a career path with a growing company? AMG Vanadium is actively recruiting for its Cambridge and Zanesville plants. Come join a company with a strong environmental purpose and commitment to community. To learn more, visit AMG's website at amg-v.com careers. AMG offers a competitive wage and benefit package. Applications are currently being accepted. Just like on the field, we believe in teamwork with our customers. This is Ashley Rich from the Farmers Emergence Bank on the Square in Colwell. With our services, you can bank from your home, the office, or even at the stadium. You can sit back and enjoy the game knowing your money is in great hands. Good luck to all the local teams this year from everyone at the Farmers Emergence Bank. Member FDIC. And back at the Noble County Fairground, you just about caught us off guard, Cooper. Almost. He's trying. <laughs> Almost. He's trying. Almost. 23-7, 5.31 to go. Favor of the Fort Fry Cadets. They will kick it off. High end over end kick again to that's, that's Wheeler. Wheeler. Wheeler starts up the right side, and he is going to be – he reverses his field. He's coming back this way to us. And he is going to be knocked out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. I don't know how far he ran to get there, but, boy, he sure ran a long ways. He ran probably about 110 yards yeah. to pick up seven. Yeah. yeah he goes and we've over. got a flag on the other side, yes, John. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And I've got a feeling that's going to go against the Redskins. Let's see. They're talking. Personal foul. Oh, personal foul. 
I looked over and I saw three Redskins on that side and only one cadet, so wow. And I think that won't make Coach Huck very and happy. I think Coach Huck wants an explanation. So that's going to move the ball out to the 40 yard line for the Redskins. So they got good starting field good, position right here. They've got position. their work cut out for them, but you know, you're not going to get them all one time. They need to start chipping away if they want to maintain and, and stay in this football game. So, so that's going to move it up to the 49. 49 yard line. So, Kale Bender goes into the shotgun. Marshall Sayer on his. Well, on his right hip. And again, a bad snap causes the play to break down early and he stopped in the backfield by number 66. Not sure who that is for the cadets. That is, I'll get him here as soon as I get Caleb down. Briggs. Caleb Briggs. I had him. He said I a had him on there, yeah. He's had a nice game here tonight. So that brings up second and about 12. Clock running, third quarter, 23-7 cadets. Redskins up over the ball. Flankers to the two to the left. One to the right. Sayre behind Bender. Sayre gets the ball. And he fumbles. He fumbles the football. They got a mark there, and the cadets say they have it, but let's see. Officials have not given a signal. They're blowing the whistles, but everybody's jockeying for position. And that fumble took place right about the line of scrimmage, so yep. there will be no gain. So let's see. Boy, a lot of indecision on the decisions. <laughs> As they try to untank. They're Clayton, still untangling them. Clayton, Clayton Miller feels pretty sure. And that there the, they uh, go. It is cadet cadets football. And they so have boy, recovered it. A rare, rare miscue by Sayre as he uh, let that one get away from him. So the cadets take over at the Redskin 49-yard line. That's the third turnover third tonight turnover here for, for the, the uh, Redskins. Yes. And you can't win football games with turnovers. So the cadets have it now in Redskin territory. First and 10, 420 left to go in the third quarter, leading 23 to seven. As Miller goes back into the shotgun, man in motion. And there's a flag down, Miller running it on his own, headed for the left sideline, run out of bounds right there, but there's a flag on the far side. So let's see what the uh, flag is from the linesman on There's the explanation to the official. What's that mean? Please? Okay, motion, motion, legal motion. Yeah, that's kind of a... So that will move the ball back to the uh, Fort Fry 46. So that's five penalties okay. tonight so far for 50 yards against the that's, Cadets, and that's, that's a rarity. That's it is a very uncharacteristic yes, of the uh, of a Eric so, Huck coach team. Yeah, be there's some, been some mistakes be some here tonight, both be, ways. Be some guys don't want to go to the, go to the film room. Yes. <laughs> okay, Cadets have it. Miller in the shotgun rolls back to throw. He's one downfield. Got a man wide open. Got it. Got it. Guess who? Yeah, guess who? Brown. And Kale Bender was uh, turned around completely. So it's completed to the 20 yard line. So that's 30 some yards on that. 35. 35 yards on that pass play. And, and boy, uh, uh, Eric Huck and his cadets are exploiting the Redskin secondary. Or should I say, well, I tell you, the, 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 the sophomore Miller throws a nice football. Okay, first and 10 on the Redskin 20, man in motion. And there goes Riddle up the middle. He's got running room, running hard, pushing down to about the six, down to about the six yard line. 
goes Miller. Or excuse me, that's uh, that's Ethan Dusky. E Ethan, was that 21? I thought that it was, was 12. Or 12. Okay. Yeah, Ethan Dusky. Yep. Er, spotted it about to seven. So now it's first and goal uh, for the cadets as they're trying to put this one uh, out of reach. As Miller goes into the shotgun, man in motion. And again, it's Brown, and there goes Brown to the end zone. And guess what, folks? Brown is into the end zone for the cadets. So this one's getting out of hand for the Redskins. It all turned on that interception, interception. John. Interception. Every, and, and since then, the uh, Redskins have just not had any answer no. for the cadets. That pushes the score now to 29 to 7 in favor of the cadets as they get ready for the PAT. 2.59 left in this one in the third quarter as the Zayden Huck, uh oh, that one is no good, wide left. So Huck got a little pressure on that one and pushed it left. Little, so, little pressure. Wasn't a very good snap. No. It was a good job that time by. Uh, Clayton Miller, the holder, to get the ball down, but uh, threw the timing off just enough to make the ball go wide. So, so the re score remains 29, Fort Fry, 7 for the Redskins. We'll take a short break here for Cooper and uh, be back and ready for the last three minutes of the third quarter. Now located at 16050 McConnellsville Road in Caldwell, Ohio, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance Company is a mutual insurance company established in 1896 for the purpose of providing insurance coverage to rural Ohio. They offer a product to meet your insurance need, whether it is for a farm, rental dwelling, home in town, secondary or seasonal dwelling, churches, or mobile home. They partner with Grinnell Mutual Insurance Company to offer liability coverage to package with their patrons Buckeye Mutual policy. Call today at 638 3604 and follow them on Facebook at Patrons Buckeye. Back at the fairgrounds, it's a little silent over to our left uh, here in the uh, press box as the cadets have reeled off 20, what, 22 straight I, 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 I was going to let you come I, up with that I, because I wanted, I wanted to see your listen, math ability I, right there. I'll I tell you my math ability. If I, <laughs> if I had to take a course in math at OU, I'd still be there. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I, Matt I, I, is not. My I was, strength. I was, I was waiting for that answer, <laughs> and you got it. You nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> twenty-two unanswered points lead 29-27. High end over end kick, and they kicked a Wheeler every time. And uh, Wheeler starts now, reverses, comes back, comes back this way, and he's headed for the sidelines. And oh boy, did he, did he take? Oh. A, no. They're going to get a targeting call, I believe, uh, that time on Braxton. Well, uh, is there targeting in Braxton? high school? Well, we're going to find out. Uh, because he Brown? went. It was on Brown. Braxton Brown, the wide receiver. He uh, he went ahead. He went to helmet to helmet on that one. Yeah, I didn't know uh, whether you did uh, called that in high school. Uh, they should. And we've got we've got a Caldwell player, player down, down over here that, on the sideline. Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. He is feeling the effects of that uh, of that hit uh, by the Fort Fry cadets as the officials uh, group up at the 30 yard line to discuss, you know, uh, what the call is going to be. Uh, I tell you, that's kind of a it, it's close. Uh, there, you know, he, he was out of bounds. But yet again, you know, it's hard for a defender to to, uh, to check up sometimes. Yeah, and, if, you, uh, if you've you left know, and he's yeah. still in bounds. Yeah. So we'll see how this one plays out. We just hope that uh, Dylan is. Yeah, that's uh, the main is, thing right is now. Not, is not hurt and uh, able to. Yeah, he's up on his own and he's a tough kid. Yeah, he's, he's a little uh, wobbly he's a right little now. Wobbly right now, yeah. He's uh, he he. I don't think he could count to ten right now. Uh, I'd say he. Uh, they need to take his helmet. He's probably. I'd yeah. say there's a good chance that young yeah. man is done. Yeah, yeah. For the night. Yeah, uh, and in this in these situations, folks, you got to err on the side of caution. For sure. There is no. Their safety about is it. Of, of utmost importance. Yeah. 
Yep, absolutely. And they're going to mark that off against the Redskins. I don't know. I didn't see the call. What? But they marked that. Yeah, that's a 10-yard penalty against Caldwell. Well, I didn't see Unless that. there was a hold out here, maybe, where the hit took place. Well, yeah. It almost I, would have it to be. It have to be, yeah. So, folks, we can't quite give you that. If you watch, the, uh, watch uh, Cooper's replays there, maybe you can see something that, that we didn't hear. But the cadets seem to be pretty happy. 250 left to go here in this quarter. 29-7 in favor of the Fort Fry cadets as Braxton, or <laughs> Kale Bender is in the backfield. Running backs to both sides, yep. Duvald and Sayer. And two wide outs to the left as Duvall gets it and he's not going anywhere. And he's not going anywhere as the cadets all over that one led by Caleb Riggs, number 66, and he's going to lose about two yards. So the suit's starting to rip a little bit here. Yeah, it is. The, the uh, cadets have seized momentum of this football game. Oh Control boy, have of they, a, yes. Have they? Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, if you, you know, we talked here and you point out, boy, ever since that uh, interception by Brown, uh, things have just not went well for the Redskins. So they have it second and 12, the ball on their own 18-yard line. Big possession right here. Bender has it. He's going to run it on his own. Nowhere to go. And there, and there's there's Briggs again. Man, and I tell you what, he's waiting for him. He's done a nice job and, for his defensive end position tonight. And he stops him for a loss of about five on that play. So second down, it's going to be about second down and about uh, 16 or 17, and the ball resting on about the 12-yard line. Not a great, Redskins. not a great situation here no, for the Redskins. A little thing in this Fort Fry secondary is Bender gets the ball, rolls to his left, looks downfield, throws, complete. Oh, drop! Ball dropped. Dropped. Right. And again, Braxton Dudley again drops one right into his hands. So incomplete brings up fourth down and sixteen and. Like I was telling no, uh, at OU, old Frank Ritchie, uh, he'd always say, if it circles again, see if you can get a shot at it. Man. Yeah, he said, look that ball into your hands. Yeah, that would have been huge because yeah, that would have been enough, been I a, believe, for a that first was a down. first down, yeah. That was about the 30, uh, pretty close to the 33, 34-yard line. So Bender back in punt formation, gets the punt off, high end over end, drives Huck back. He fakes at it and lets it roll. Good decision. Yep, 39-yard line. The cadets will have it again here as they have really dominated this third quarter. They line. have, boy. Like you said, a 7-7. That interception yeah. took place, and it's been all downhill. And, and yeah. again, we mentioned, you know, what would happen uh, in a four-quarter game for the Redskins, and we, they've not uh, responded very well here in the we, third quarter. We did allude to that, I, I, I believe. Must have been, uh, must have been uh, coaching coming out in us or something. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, we've never uh, been in that situation, I've never been have in we? That situation, no. no. Yeah, walk in the huddle and say, guys, come on now, we're going to wear them down. We'll, we'll wear them down. And you mentioned, I got a feeling that uh, Coach Huck alluded to that situation to his players there at halftime. Okay, ball on their own 39-yard line. There's Here that goes little inside the, trap. Inside trap, and number number 21, that's Austin Powell, and he picks up a first down. So that's a Caldwell Lumber first down out to about the 49-yard line. Let's see where they mark it. They may it's, mark it just a hair oh, short. Oh, no, I, yeah, it's way back at the about the 48-yard line of Fort Fry. So second down and about... A long, long two, short one. <laughs> As we're like down a inside a minute here in the third quarter. Yep. Clock is running. Miller under center now. Man in motion. Gives it to the second man through. And that's Brown. And Brown rumbles up to about the uh, 30, uh, about the 41-yard line. 
And that's a first down for the cadets. And uh, that's a nice run by Brown was. that time because he was met head on right at the line of scrimmage, broke that tackle and picked up 10 yards. After that, one more play of this third quarter here as the clock continues to run as Miller goes up under center, the six foot sophomore. Man in motion again, coming right at us. And wow, there, there, there goes. are gaping holes yeah, in there. And that, and that's Ethan Dusky. And Dusky wasn't touched until he gets down to about the 20, 23 yard line. So he picks up about 20 uh, on that carry as the clock winds under 15. That'll be the last play of the third quarter. Redskins down 29 to 7 in this one as the third quarter has not been kind to the Redskins at all. We've got a penalty flag. We do. Thrown by the back, Judge. I see Braxton Dudley going out of the ball game. And it's an unsportsmanlike 15 yard. That's not good. No. So the uh, when adversity comes, it shows who you are. Seven penalties for 65 yards tonight against the Redskins. And that... Uh, that clock's going to run out here yep, to so end the... Mercifully, mercifully end the third for quarter the for the Redskins. get into right. a fresh quarter and see if they can make something happen. So at the end of three here at the fairgrounds, it's 29-7 to seven in favor of the cadets. So, Cooper, it's all yours here for a while. Before we start the first quarter, the fourth quarter, we'll catch our breath for a second. Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by the City Tire Pros. All these in the fourth quarter right now. Barnesville leading Monroe Central 56 to nothing. Cambridge ahead of Warren Local 28-13 in the fourth. Granville beating Zanesville 37-7. River ahead of Shenandoah 40-14 in the fourth quarter. St. Clairsville ahead of Union Local 12-6. Coshocton leading Crooksville 7-6 in the fourth quarter. And Buckeye Trail beating Strasburg Franklin in the fourth, 37 to six. And that's your City Tire Pros scoreboard. Ready for fourth quarter action here at the fairgrounds in Noble County. And boy, Mike, Redskins coming wow. off a disaster quarter. It was. Boy, I tell you, what a great first half of action we had here tonight, John. But boy, the tables got turned right there. And it was all Fort Fry Cadets there in the third quarter as they outscored the Redskins 22 to nothing to take a 29 to 7 lead here. And they will begin the fourth quarter with the ball on the Redskins, yes. like 12 yard line. Yeah, you know, it's almost like. Uh, Heard General Old George Patton say one time, "Boys, we're going to grab them, grab them by the nose, and we're going to kick them all over Europe." I think Cadets kind of grabbed the Redskins by the nose in that quarter, kind of kicked them all over the football field uh, there. But still got uh, 12 minutes left to go. Nothing is impossible. But the Cadets are in scoring position. Miller in the shotgun, drops back, and there goes Owen Brown. And he's going to get to about the five-yard line. Tackle made there by Ethan Kroc with assistance from Colby Langley. So he picks up about, uh, uh, what are they going to mark that? Yeah, about, about six on that. And that's, you know, just a, just a solid run by Owen Brown. Well, we said, I mean, he's, he's very capable. So he came in here. Just short of a thousand yards. He's gone over a thousand yards now. Yeah, well, rightfully so. Now this time, Miller goes under center. The sophomore under center looks over the defense. He's not in any hurry. Clock's no. in his favor. Clock is his friend right yep. now. Takes the snap, gives it right up the middle, and that's a touchdown. He walk, goes in untouched. In, un untouched. As that's Ethan Dusky for the cadets. So that pushes the lead to 35 to seven as the onslaught continues. Yes, it does. So the Redskins have just not answered the bell in the second half 
uh, defensively. And, uh, you know, Mike, I I'm going to credit uh, the uh, cadets' passing game. I, without a doubt. They, they have found the weakness, and they've uh -oh. exploited it here in, in the uh, – Second half. Uh, Miller, I've got Miller right now, seven out of ten. Timeout, Fort Fry. So they will keep it here. Okay. I got Miller to, on the evening, seven out of ten for 123 yards. Uh, and, for a sophomore. For a sophomore. sophomore. He yeah. uh, is nice composure back there, uh, runs the offense extremely well, and uh, boy, he throws a nice football. And he's got a couple of nice receivers to throw the football, does. too. I tell you, I, when Owen Brown r r uh, stretched out for that. Braxton cat, Brown. Or Braxton. The other, yeah. <laughs> oh, Brown. When Braxton Brown yeah. has laid out for that uh, catch there in the third quarter at about the, oh, about the 17 or 18-yard line for about a 30-yard 30, 30 uh, pass play, uh, that's uh, – and, uh, you know, the defender was right in front of him. That's a big-time and, play. Yeah, it big was. Big-time play. It was. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, uh, it can't take. It can't blame the defender. No. He was where he was supposed to be. The ball was just where he couldn't get to it. Now, there have been some wide-open receivers that he's yeah. had ability to throw to it. That was just a nice catch by Brown. Cadets will go for two. Guess who? Owen Brown walks into in. the end zone. 37-7. to seven. Now – for the cadets as they have put this one pretty well out of reach. 11.08 left to go here in the third quarter. Cooper, you can have it and show some pictures of the fairground if you want to. We'll catch some more breaths here. Hi, this is Stan from Dudley Satellite, your local dish authorized retailer. Our community is our family, and we are committed to supporting causes that matter here in southeastern Ohio. That's why we are proud supporters of high school sports. It's just one way we are helping to make a difference right here in our own backyard. Call us at 740-581-1191 or visit 510 Cumberland Street, Caldwell, to learn more about how we are supporting our community through Dish Cares. Good evening again from the Noble County Fairground. I just kind of ease into that as the Redskins, uh, if you got up and go to the refrigerator, uh, the Redskins now trail, Mike, 37 Boy, it, it's to hard seven. to believe. It, it, it turned in a hurry. Heartbeat. At 30 unanswered points, the cadets have put, put on the board. Uh, in about 13 in, minutes. Yes. Just a little less, or little less than 13 minutes. So, yeah, and as Tice Duvall will take this one, and he is looking for it. Um, he's stopping, skipping, and he's going to be he, hemmed in over there and stopped at about the uh, uh, the 17-yard line. Now we've got flag, another flag. It, it, flag this has kind of turned ugly. Yep, and this is uh, going to probably be against the Cadets for uh, – uh, piling on or uh, extracurricular out of bounds. Oh, yeah, from where we're at, it's hard to tell, but yeah. looks like he might have been hit out of bounds yeah. over there. And there's another and flag. There's another flag. As somebody chirped. Well, you know, you hate to kind of say it, but, you know, adversity kind of brings out the true colors sometimes who, who yeah. you are and the Redskins certainly are in adversity as we speak and you know you hate to see that but I think I think one of those is one, on the cadets. one of those is against the one cadets of those are yes. on the cadets yeah as they had several and, and that's the other thing how, how do you handle success and I'm sure that yeah. there's been some chirping out there you yeah. know uh -huh. we told you guys you yeah. know I'm we, sure yeah. that's been oh. been going on what's what boys the, will be boys yep Yep. Now let's see what we're going to signal here. We think both flag, all three flags There's are right over there on the sideline. So they're telling, he's telling the uh, far sideline official over here at the Fort Fry side. Okay, we got, we got a, face a face mask, mask is one of them. The cadets. No uh, foul. Cut a Klein. And uh, unsportsmanlike against the. Redskins decline. Yep, so they offset. So they, so the Redskins will have the ball at 
the looks like the 20 yard, 20 yard line, first and 10. After all that. After all that. Yep. So Bender. Well, what we want to see here, we we yeah, don't yeah, want to see anything no. stupid happen here no. in this last Bender. Ten and a half minutes. Hand off to Marshall Sayre. No running room off the right side as he is going to be tackled right about the line of scrimmage and no gain. So now the uh, cadets are, you know, under no pressure. They can just ears back and teeth out now coming at you. Yeah, and that's not good for Bender if you're going no, to try to throw the football. No, Bender in the shotgun, wide outs to the left and to the right, one in the slot to the right. Bender fumbles the snap, has to run it, and here comes the pursuit, and he's going to be brought down right at the line of scrimmage. He may have gotten a, gotten a yard tackle by Braxton Brown on the tackle. So, again, a bad – or, Noel, just – Mishandled it, it, the snap. Yes. Yep, as he dropped it. And, of course, now you got to get anything you can get if you're Kale Bender and he picks up about a yard on that play. So a broken play. This, Second down. Again, it's a situation that the uh, Redskins have not been in, and they're not handling this situation very well. Bender in the shotgun. Three wide outs to the right and one to the left. There's a handoff to Sayre. Sayre goes nowhere. Wow. As he's going to get right back to the line of scrimmage. And that will set up another punting situation for the Redskins. So ball on the 22-yard line of their own. And Braxton Brown drops back to about his own 46 or 47-yard line as Kale Bender gets ready to punt again. No rush. Gets off a nice, high, high kick. spiraling Good puck. Kick. Fielded by Brown. Dropped it. Picks it up. And it will be Fort Fry's ball at about their own 42. That's about the first one that uh, Braxton Brown has uh, mishandled back yeah. there. And he almost looked a little nonchalant on that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 8.40 to go here in the fourth quarter. 37 to seven, the score for the cadets as they have come out in the second half and put on a clinic, Mike. They have. They have uh, exploited some weaknesses in the- uh, Secondary. Secondary of the Redskins and uh, give Ho Coach Huck and his staff uh, credit for realizing that and taking advantage of it here. Letting the play clock run now, 8.16 left. Yeah, there's go. no hurry, like you no, no said before. In no hurry, letting the play clock run down. Seven seconds on the play clock. Man in motion, and they give it to him. That's number 21, and he's off to the races, and he's, and he's going to be brought down by Braxton Dudley, and he's down to the 12-yard line. The Fort Fry fans upset at the tackle. I didn't see anything wrong with that. No. Nothing wrong with that one. I'm sure they thought yeah. that was a horse collar, but. Yeah, there wasn't, not at all. So that sets up the cadets in Redskin territory. Ball on the 12-yard line, first and 10 for the high-riding cadets here in this second half. So Miller brings his offense up to the line again in the shotgun. Owen Brown on his left hip. Gives it to Owen Brown and they get a flag and he's in for the touchdown. But I think that's going to be an illegal block. I think so. Yep, that's going to come back. Two flags down on that. So that's going to come back. As I believe Brown did get into the end zone, but they're going to bring it back. It looks like they may have marked him out at the one, but like you said, I don't think it's going to make any difference. No. It might have been a crackback block over there by Braxton Brown. Might have been the call. So let's see what the official is going to say. It is against the cadets. Personal foul. It is a crackback block. Yeah, that's a crackback. So that'll be a 15-yarder. 
And I don't see Coach Huck looking for any explanation, so he must have felt that uh, whoever did that got what they it deserved. It was justified, yeah. Yep. So that moves the ball back to the 26-yard line, and that makes it first down and about 25, Mike. Yeah, because they yeah, have they to get to the one-yard line yeah. for a first down. So, again, Miller brings him to the line of scrimmage, looks over the defense, and again now letting the clock run, getting down to the six-minute mark in this one. That's smart clock management yep. on the part of the Clock uh, goes the down to five. Now he's ready for the snap. Man in motion. And there again, right up the middle. That's uh, Dusky, I believe. Yes. He's going to get about, oh, maybe two or, th two or three yards. Yeah. Carpenter on, on the tackle for the Redskins. Jace Norman in there again, too, on the tackle. Five and a half minutes left to go in this one. From the fairgrounds in Noble County, Mike Plasiak, John Seekers with you tonight. Again, Miller in no hurry in the shotgun. Goes the man in motion, Brown. Gives it to Brown. Brown bounces, bounces off outside and gets it down to about the 12 yard line. So that'll bring up third down and no, maybe manageable. We don't know. Don't think there's any flags down. Nope. Ball's marked ready for play. Play clock's running. Brown will milk it down, I'm sure. Just looks over the looks over the defense. Make sure Owen Brown's behind yeah. him. <laughs> That's a good idea. Now he's under center. Sets his man in motion. Gives it gives it to number 21. Uh, Powell. Austin Powell. And Powell goes in for the 12-yard touchdown run as. The last two or three touchdowns by the cadets, they've gone in untouched, Mike. I tell you so what, that was good ball handling that time by Miller because I had a hard time figuring out yeah, exactly I did who too. had the football. I, I thought it was going the other way. Yeah. Yeah, so that runs the score to 43-7. to seven. So the cadets are making the statement, Mike. It's hard to believe that not long ago we were sitting here at 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, so they're gone for one. Down is up, and the kick is good and there's a 15 yarder coming against the against the Redskins as one of the one of the Redskins shoved the uh, holder uh, off so the Redskins coming apart at all the scenes the cheap suit starting to rip Mike hate to see that I do too and that that one that one that oh on the cadets I thought that was on the Redskins, on the shove. Well, we missed that one. Anyway, it's 44 to seven, 417 left to go here in the ball game. And it's just been a total domination by the cadets That's, in the second half. Just you can't explain it any better, total. yes, yeah. Absolutely total. Yes. All aspects of this football, football game in the second game. half have belonged to yeah. the red, white, and yeah. blue clad cadets. Yep, and you hate to see them get them uh, unsportsmanlike. Yes. Uh, you know, there's no, you know, you just, uh, that's not, not conducive to football. Anyway, we're going to kick this one off again, and they will kick off from the 40, so there must not have been a. No. Oh, yeah, there it comes. They're going to kick it off from the uh, 45. So it was unsportsmanlike against the Redskins. Eight penalties for 80 yards Yep. against Caldwell here this evening. And now with that score, we should be in for a running clock here the remainder of this football Ab game. Absolutely. And who would have thought that I had when it no. was 7-7 at the half? 
So there's the run forward. Boy, and that one's boomed in through the end zone. So the Redskins will get it, what, 25? In high school, I think I think it's it is at 25, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. So and I think the uh, if there kicker. was a kicking problem with the cadets, I think Zayden Huck has, I, I has stepped up and uh, taken care of that responsibility. I, I believe it, uh, yeah. Because that's something that's given them a little bit of problem here in recent history. But, boy, he's uh, got a pretty strong leg. Yes. Yeah, because uh, uh, as a matter of fact, that came back to bite them once in the playoff. It did, yes. Yep, they lost the playoff game uh, because uh, of a missed two extra points. They could not kick it. Redskins have it. It's a handoff to Sayer. Sayer running, running hard, and he's picked up yardage. And he is picks up a first down. That's the first time we've said that uh, said that for a long time. Yeah, that's only yep. first down number six for the Redskins As he tonight. Moves it out to the 32-yard line. Clock running. Bender. In the shotgun, Sarah behind him. Give it to Sarah again. Sarah uh, up the middle, and he may go. He's down the sidelines, and he's going to be finally, finally knocked out of bounds by number by number 15 as he advanced. And Henderson runs him out of bounds at the 15. So two really nice runs by Marshall Sayer, but I think. Uh, you know, it's uh, too little, too, too late. Too little, too late. Uh, on that one. So the Redskins go on Something up. you want to keep in mind right now. I think Sarah this again. is going against the second group of the cadets. It could very well be. I haven't got I see a lot of clean jerseys clean out jerseys there. Clean jerseys out the, there. As Sayer gets, uh, runs it down to about the, uh, uh, about the 12-yard line, I believe. And with those last three carries, yeah. that moves him up to 14 carries a night. 115 yards. Yeah, he, uh, Sarah boy, is a hard runner. He is. So now they look to the sideline for the play. We're going to go under a minute now as Bender gets the play, as he stays in the, in the shotgun, gives it to number 21, and that's Jared Van Fossen, the ball carrier. And he gets down to about the, the it's going to be a first, first down. down. Yep. So Van Fossen in at running back next to Kale Bender. And this will so probably be the, the, be the last be play the of this last football play of the game. ball game here, folks. And again, they give it to, uh, yeah, that's Van Fossen again. And he stopped in the backfield. and. That's going to do it, folks, from the Noble County Fairground and a surprising 44-7 win by the Fort Fry Cadets over the previously undefeated Caldwell Redskins. So that being said, we'll say send it back to our director here. And we'll go from there. We'll be back with final statistics in just a few minutes. Just like on the field, we believe in teamwork with our customers. This is Ashley Rich from the Farmers and Merchants Bank on the Square in Colwell. With our services, you can bank from your home, the office, or even at the stadium. You can sit back and enjoy the game knowing your money is in great hands. Good luck to all the local teams this year from everyone at the Farmers and Merchants Bank. Member FDIC. Hi, this is Stan from Dudley Satellite, your local dish authorized retailer. Our community is our family, and we are committed to supporting causes that matter here in southeastern Ohio. That's why we are proud supporters in high school sports. It's just one way we are helping to make a difference right here in our own backyard. Call us at 740-581-1191 or visit 510 Cumberland Street, Caldwell to learn more about how we are supporting our community through Dish Cares. Everyone's looking for an encouraging sign in today's economy. The fact is, you'll find one right here in Caldwell at State Farm Agent Sue Snow's office. 
because State Farm agents like Sue have been here helping people protect the things that matter most. That's why more people trust State Farm, and we consider that a very good sign. See State Farm agent Sue Snow at 400 East Street, Caldwell. This is Russ Abels. This time of the year, there are two big reasons homeowners call us here at Abels. The first is for annual maintenance. Our technicians know how to keep heating systems running perfectly. Our detailed tune-up and safety check will help you avoid a breakdown and improve your system's energy efficiency. The other reason is it is time to replace your heating. And if that's you, right now we can help you save with a new high efficiency system. So wherever you're at, we're ready to help. For heating and air conditioning, call Abel's. Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by the City Tire Pros. All these in the fourth quarter right now. Barnesville leading Monroe Central 56 to nothing. Cambridge ahead of Warren Local 28-13 in the fourth. Granville beating Zanesville 37 to 7. River ahead of Shenandoah 40 to 14 in the fourth quarter. St. Clairsville ahead of Union Local 12 to 6. Coshocton leading Crooksville 7 to 6 in the fourth quarter. And Buckeye Trail beating Strasburg Franklin in the fourth. 37 to 6. And that's your City Tire Pro scoreboard. And welcome back to the Noble County Fairgrounds. John Seekers, Mike Palaziak, the pleasure of bringing this football game to you tonight. And a, what a first half of football it was. But uh, the cheering, the second half all come from the Fort Fry side. Kind of silent here on, yeah. the, on the home side here, yeah, the second 30, half. I believe in my math is correct, 37 unanswered points. 37 unanswered points, I'm getting yeah. better. I'm getting better. Well, actually, if you want to go right back to it, from the beginning, there was 44 unanswered points because the Redskins took a 7 nothing lead 37 seconds well, into the game uh, and no, then oh, never scored again. I, my, your math skills never cease to amaze <laughs> me. <laughs> Only a mathematician, Only looks, mathematician looks at all of the nooks and crannies of a, you know, a, of a mathematical problem. Exactly. <laughs> but it was a very uh, fun football game. Uh, and uh, there just isn't a whole lot to say. Uh, the, the football game changed in the second half because Fort Fry decided that they were going to test the pass defense of the Redskins, and the Redskins did not respond. Did they not get pressure on Miller, Clayton Miller, the sophomore quarterback? and they did not get coverage on the Fort Fryer receivers. And they made big play after big play in that third quarter, and uh, that spelled their demise. you you got to give uh, the offensive line a lot of credit for Fort Fry. As you said, they gave Clayton Miller a lot of time yes. to find wide-open receivers. And uh, when the ball wasn't there, I tell you what, there was one outstanding catch made there oh, by Braxton boy. Brown. This was a, that, that's a highlight. Yeah. real uh, yeah. catch play that he game, made, right? To probably play of the game yeah, without I, a doubt. I agree. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, once the momentum swung towards Fort Fry, the uh, the Redskins were in a situation they hadn't been in this year and, and didn't respond to it real well. And uh, like you said, maybe it was a situation where they hadn't been tested all year. Tonight they had to play four quarters and just weren't able to do it. Yeah. Uh, there, you know, uh, people are going to point all kinds of fingers, uh, obviously. But, uh, you know, I think, you know, you and I have been around athletics for a long time, probably too long. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we kind of looked at each other up here and we said, we used the two words, wear down. And, yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're not uh, – you know, but I have to believe that that was that that was a factor. And in defense of Chance Rucker, what do you do? I mean, what do you do? And here's the thing: people don't understand. So why didn't you schedule better people? Well, you and <laughs> I both it. have been an athletic director, it. also. Yeah, it's very it's difficult a, to schedule football, and those schedules are made two or three years in advance of the actual playing of the game. And a lot of the teams we had on the schedule. Buckeye local, I mean, was very good, good. last year. Connaughton Valley has had good good seasons. I mean, the, those when those when that schedule was made, we didn't expect that to happen. What took place this year? So you you, you really can't point the finger no. to anybody. No, you play who's on the schedule. You do the best you can. 
And it's going to be interesting to see how the Redskins respond after their first loss of the year because they've got to go on. The, it's a home game, but they're going on the road to Otterbein Otter next week. College, yeah. And, and, and I, I don't know how good North Baltimore either. is, but, you know, you're going to be tested. You've got a, you've got a trip. And then you've got Shenandoah in the Novo County Super Bowl in two weeks. Yeah, and, so, and, uh, and, and, you know, Shenandoah's not that bad. You know, no, they're, they're, they're they, very good, they, and they throw the and, ball and, well. Well, I, see, well, I, yeah, I was going to allude to that. What, well. what, what, that's what hurt Colwell the most tonight yeah. was the ball in the air, and they're, they're going to tighten some things up here in the next couple of weeks. Well, yeah, they got some Because they will be tested. Yeah, they, they do, yes. But, you know, I, I, I tip my hat to Chance Rucker. Because I do, yes. in, in all those games, you know, and, and he and I, he was obvious, he even expressed concern, you know, what do I do in those games with my players? You know, we're what fifty some to nothing. You, you he, can't he said, keep it. What, what do I do? And and so I, my my hat is off to him. Uh, and I, I think the chance from this game will learn a lot. Yes, from absolutely. This game, I really believe that. Yeah, uh, it's just something that uh, that uh, now he can say, okay, now boy, we got uh, we got to watch that and that. So. Anyway, give us some stats here, mathematicians. Real, real quickly, the yes. uh, Redskins on the night, 28 carries, 150 yards. They were led by the senior, Marshall Sayer, in a lot of these games late. But he had 14 carries, 115 yards. Cale Bender, uh, probably one of his worst nights as, as a quarterback throwing the football, only 3 out of 12, 63 yards, no completions in the second half. Yeah. One touchdown and two interceptions. Uh, again, Dylan Wheeler, leading receiver, two catches, 61 yards, all in the first half for the only touchdown. Uh, one of the key things, they had eight penalties tonight for 80 yards. And, yes. again, if you're going to beat a good football team, you can't make mistakes. Absolutely. 80 yards and penalties and three turnovers. Yeah, you and, can't and, have it. And it can't the, happen. And this is the eighth game of the season, yeah. too, and you want to have that. Uh, so... Uh, a game of two halves. Game of two halves, exactly. Game of two halves. As the cadets come out uh, with a game plan in the second half that the Redskins had no had no answer had for. No it. answer, correct. Yep. And uh, so consequently, the final score ends up 44 to seven in favor of the cadets from Washington County, and it uh, will be a lot shorter ride over 339 for them tonight. They will enjoy that ride yes. back home, yeah, and I think yes. they go to Logan next week. Yeah, and uh, uh, again, Logan, not a powerhouse no. this year. No, so. and uh, they, they will finish the season then with Williamstown, so yeah. uh, in all likelihood, they'll probably finish the season 9-1 nine and one one. in the number one seed uh, in the region. Yeah. And like I said, they had uh, big aspirations this year, and uh, right now they are trending and headed in the right direction. No question about that. If you take a look at tonight, yes. they are yeah. indeed, yeah. yes. They made because, a statement tonight. Because, uh, you know, I, and uh, no question about this is a good Caldwell football team. It is a good football team. They and they, they'll, they'll come back. They, yes. they, they, they've yes. got a nice coaching staff. There's good kids on that team. They will come back. They'll learn from this and get better. And maybe it's the best thing that could have happened to them. Sometimes that's true. I hate, you know, you always, as a coach, you always hate to say that. You hate to say that, but you <laughs> yeah. know what? Well, you know yeah. yourself, having yeah. been a coach, yeah. it, it was easier to teach the following week after a loss than yeah. it was after a win. <laughs> yeah. Because when, when, yeah. when, when you win a game, you think, okay, we're doing everything well. We don't need, need yeah. to make any adjustments, any improvements. That. Exactly. <laughs> kids, but, yeah. uh, boy, now, they, now the coaches will have their attention. Yeah. They, uh, they can make some adjustments yeah. and hopefully finish on a positive note and uh, enter the playoffs oh, with, so. with some momentum. I, I think so. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Cooper, you got anything to add on this? <laughs> Nothing? Nice job. We want to thank, yeah, we want to thank yeah. you for all the yeah. help. I tell you, you guys this were was, great. Yep. This was fun. This was fun. Thank you for doing what what you did for us here. And John, yeah. nice job with the play by play uh, tonight. Oh uh, we yeah, flipped the coin I, yeah, and, and you lost, lost and you I had lost. to do it, but you did a nice I, job. I got a appreciate it. I got a mathematician on, <laughs> on the stats, man. I, I, all I got to do is turn and look at you and say, okay, give us some stats, <laughs> and I know I know they're accurate. So. Folks, uh, there just isn't much more to say about this one. So for Mike Plasiak, my good friend, a pleasure. It was doing, a pleasure, John. It was enjoyable. The, doing the game with you, and I hope we get to do more. And Cooper and you guys from the station, Great a job. lot of fun, very much. Uh, they're going to put on the Black Light Show here. So, again, once more, 44-7 to for the cadets. Good night, everyone.
Thank you for watching AVC Sports. Today's game is brought to you by Don't Ford, Patron Buckeye Mutual Insurance, WB Green, West 40 Auto Sales, Southeastern Med, Abel's, Valentine Insurance, AMG Vanadium, Farmers Merchant Bank, Sue Snowed, and Dudley Satellites.